Good evening, one and all. My name is Peter, and it is my honor to welcome you all to episode two of Strife of the Chosen. Our regular program, Trapped by Hope, is on a temporary hiatus as our wonderful DM is away performing in real life for the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, we will be playing a trio of Avernus-themed adventures and uh, we'll be doing that over the next three weeks with me tonight for a hellishly good time are Jade, alias Prime. We have Lindsay Rousseau for the first time on Lawful Stupid Twitch. We have Samus and we have Liz. Welcome, everyone. Good to see you this Monday evening. How are we doing? What? Yeah. Hey, guys. Fantastic. We return to the depths of hell themselves. The first layer of which, called Avernus, is the site of an endless war. It's burned, scorched surface, torn asunder by war machines, by um, armies of devils, throngs of demons in a never-ending battle. The souls that end up here face torment, sometimes nearing eternity. And there are others in this place who seek to use the power of the devils, the um, chaos of the plane itself for their own ends. Then there are some here for another purpose entirely. When noble souls end up in a place like this, well, something legendary must be happening. In the middle of Avernus, there is a traveling bazaar of sorts known as the Wandering Emporium. It is run by a powerful being named Mahadi. Mahadi is respected even by the loftiest and most powerful archdevils and seems to be given free reign to travel and peddle wares across Avernus. The Wandering Emporium is known to be one of the only places on the infernal soil in which some actual rest can be found and that food, water, and nourishment can be found in a way that will actually satisfy your body. Mahadi is no is certainly not a gracious benefactor, though, as most of you by this time at this level would know. He is dealer in finery. He is dealer in power, magic items. He is also a dealer of souls, as are many of the other devils in this arena. Many who find their way to the Emporium take advantage of his hospitality, find themselves unable to pay and end up paying their debt over centuries through labor and sometimes worse. This, this wandering emporium, this place full of magic, strange creatures, devils, extra planar entities, this is where we resume our story. Last time, a group of adventurers met with a young child named Dara who heard the faintest call of an old friend, something powerful that she needed, chalice crafted from the head of a hound, the fetid chalice, it was called, an object of loathing. The only trouble, it was located in the fortress of an archdevil. After some bargaining, some fighting, some dancing, and other uh, shenanigans, the group was able to retrieve this chalice. And when it got to Dara's hands, she smashed it on the ground, the pieces reformed, and suddenly a beautiful hound-headed angel stood before her. This angel sniffed the air and indicated Uriel is near he calls for aid as this was happening 
Karulas, Marrow, you were in the room for this. You saw this. But you remember just a day ago, as you all simultaneously entered this room, um, this tent set up in the Emporium where Dara has been staying, you all entered simultaneously as if drawn by fate or some other powerful magic. So in the very moment that this angel begins to form, you see different flaps of the tent opening simultaneously. Juniper, your route is not that uncommon to some of the others in this tent. You, at the best of your order, journeyed to Candlekeep to seek the help of the sages because you had heard the call, your circle had heard the call of this child. The order, the land had benefited. And legend has it that one of your greatest trees grew in the place where Ilmater himself had shed blood, sacrificing his own body in some way to save the grove, along with some of your most powerful spirits. The time has come for the debt to be returned, and so you ask the sages to send you to the heart of hell itself. After some journey, you came to the Emporium, and passing through between the stalls of the merchants, the vendors and such, you saw a strange little tent in the middle and your wisdom, your knowledge told you this must be the place. You pull aside the flap just in time to see a bright, almost blinding light. There are a number of other creatures in here. Maybe most notably, a small child with a beaming smile on her face, standing in front of this hound-headed angel that begins to take form. Juniper, as you step into the tent, would you care to describe yourself, please? Sure. Uh, Juniper is a valley elf. She is uh, about 5'2". She is luminescent. She is wearing this very flowing, almost translucent silken robe. Uh, her blonde hair goes down her back and there is a plated braid that goes around almost in a crown uh, down the side. She walks very gracefully um, and she peeks in um, into the tent and uh, she says, Oh my God, you must be Dara. Is that you? Oh my God, she's the cutest. She's so tiny. <gasps> I was not prepared. And she just steps in and uh, takes her place amongst the group. Dara turns and barely regards you as her soft little voice says, Oh good, the rest have arrived. At this very same moment, Palmera. Hell has not been the adventure you imagined. The victories are glorious, some of the battles fierce, intense, but after them, the food, the feasting brings you no pleasure. There is no release from the rage, the, the uh, catharsis of launching yourself into the fray fades only to soreness. There is no, um, there is no pleasure of the victory after it. And at time you've begun, you've begun to question your purpose here, why you would be here, why you were led here to suffer. You see for the first time, pawing, lumbering across the Avernal landscapes, a white dire bear with glowing crystal eyes. And 
it looks over to you, rears back on its hind legs, and um, you see it towering almost 20 feet high, and then the paws drop and you hear the earth um, sunder, and you hear the voice say, follow. We will shatter this realm and its cruel intentions. Following it, you see it fade into the horizon. Every hill that you crest to try to gain uh, closer to it, it seems to be further away until you see a crystal star, like a beacon above a set of tents on the horizon. Entering you, you, the wandering emporium, paying little attention to the commerce around you, you see a blue glowing tent and just the hint of white fur passing one of the flaps. And as you walk to it and throw aside the flap of the tent, you see yourself entering at the exact same time as this beautiful elf to see a young child, a tall, hound-headed angel standing in front of you. And would you just care to describe yourself as you enter in with this group? Yeah, 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 yeah. So she she steps in and um, uh, she's she's covered in fur, but she's she's braided some of the fur and has, you know, different um, baubles braided into it as well. And she's got these giant, um, almost, uh, they're either, they're almost tusk-like, uh, you know, uh, teeth coming out of her. And she looks so incredibly scary and out of place. She's a bugbear. So she's used to being the only of her kind uh, wherever she goes. Um, but she she does have a cloak on that she tries to keep the hood up most of the time to not draw too much attention to herself. But obviously uh, when she sees the child, you know, she she pulls the hood down. Do not be afraid. I was told to find you. And, and she this, looks at um, the elf and she's like, you I do not know about. The bear did not talk about you. <laughs> oh, I'm new. This is obvious. Um, the little child just looks up to you and nods as if this is appropriate and planned. Okay. Finally. And how how um, tall did you say the other the other two were? Um, how tall is um how tall is Juniper? Juniper is about five two. She's she's very tiny. Okay, so to she you. is she is towering over you all. She's she's about seven feet tall. Yeah. Juniper is looking up at you, uh, and her she just has her eyes are wide, and she just has this glowing smile. She's very excited to see you in this tent. <laughs> Your hair is very shiny. I could totally carm yours and make it that way too. <laughs> is this a conditioner thing? Like, am I just not <laughs> using the right products? <laughs> we'll get you in line with the right products. Don't worry, girl. Uh, simultaneously, as these. Uh, as these incredible personalities enter the tent, <laughs> another enters as well. Um, uh, Vosharath. This has been Vosharath. <laughs> yes, pardon Vosharef. me. You're pardoned. <laughs> Interestingly <laughs> enough, you have heard rumors around Candlekeep these days of others who have requested some uh, requested teleportation circles requested um, the teleportation sequences to the nine hells rumors of cultists of uh, malicious intent circle around the many inns and study places of candle keep and but you do not pay attention to the voices your study has always been one focused on good, on hearing what matters. And so their voices, the voices of rumors, the voices of 
those who would try to guess and spread misinformation. You shut them out. And the rest of the voices that you hear, you let them pass by. The internal voices, the external ones, the ones that flow across the weave. You hear across that secret wind, like another level of air that most around you are completely unaware of. And one voice in particular sticks out. A young child calling out, not with confusion as most do across this channel that you have become aware of, this one speaking to you almost directly. I know you're there, listener. The others have come. The others are on their way. You are needed. Ilmater needs you. Find your way to Avernus. Find your way to the Emporium. This is the most, this is the clearest voice you've ever heard. And so go, you do. Knowing that this deity is honored by your people and honored by the quarry soul. So you go down into Avernus using those same sigils and teleportation to make the long, hard journey to the Wandering Emporium. Past the vendors, past souls for sale, past the clinking of coins that ring out with some type of diabolical sound. Soul coins, coins minted into, coins minted of mortal souls themselves. All the foulery, all of this grandness and to a simple little tent and as you peek behind it knowing that somehow this is the origin of the small voice you see the child sitting there on a plain bench with a grand angel standing in front of her At the same time a um an elf and a towering bugbear enter on either side of the tent. Would you care to describe yourself, yeah. Bosharef, as you enter? Yes, Bosharef. Um, so Bosharef is a tall, like five foot nine, five ten, nearly six feet, um, but not as tall as the bugbear. <laughs> um, but she comes in and she's a slender, willowy sort of person. Um, and an interesting thing about um, the uh, the Kalashtar are that they in themselves are somewhat um, ethereal. And so she's got almost like a whiskey quality to her, like a shimmering sort of quality um, and just puts off like good energy. Um, and she has violet hair and or she has lilac colored hair and violet eyes and very pale skin and she immediately looks over the other patrons or people in the room and finds and squares in on dara and says i heard you calling in the darkness i'm here to help and she kind of like bows in supplication a little bit fealty that is good, the young child says. And she um, looks about to those already in the tent. Karulas, Mero, meet your new companions. They've come to do the will of Ilmater, whether they realize it or not. And there are two other figures who have already been in this tent. Firstly, an elven looking, uh, 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 an, an elven looking male. Um, Karolas, would you care to describe yourself? Um, 
yeah, he stands about five foot nine, five foot ten, very elven looking, but part of him you can tell that he's probably not elven. Um, he sits currently with his legs crossed, um, and he's currently sitting on a. You can only describe the underneath as a swirling, like a swirl that comes out of a, a genie's bottle. He's just sitting there with this massive tome in his hands open, just looking at pictures, and he just looks up. And, uh, oh, more newbies, eh, Marrow? Knowing that he was the newbie literally 12 hours ago. <laughs> and he is gesturing to a, I believe, halfling who is also in the room. Marrow, would you describe yourself? Marrow is halfling height. So, I don't know, up to the second knuckle of the bugbear's toe or something, just ridiculously <laughs> small, and is dressed in a fighting outfit, of course, uh, some nice leather armor, but all decorated in what would, in our normal world, be described as almost like an undertaker's clothes. Uh, Mero is light-haired, bright-eyed, smiles a lot, but seems a little bit annoyed to be there and looks over at Carolos and goes, well, they can come as many as they want. As long as we get out of here soon, I don't care. I totally know what you mean. This humidity is doing literally nothing for my hair. Do you see you're already curling? I'm literally dying. It's, it's a weird thing to Juniper because every time you try to fix the hair or every lock that you just try to put behind the ear just kind of falls back in the most ungraceful way. Um, you've been in every climate of all the realms, but nothing has made your hair misbehave like Avernus. <laughs> um, Boshareth takes Juniper at her word and looks very seriously at her. Well, if, if you were to die, I, I could bring you back. Oh my god, aren't you the sweetest? Oh, I'm totally not scared. I am here for this. Oh, great. I'm here too for this particular reason. I mean, I don't know. It's not that bad. I've definitely been in worse. (laughs) You're quite tall. I'm gonna kill you. I've never seen a bugbear in person before. Yes, uh, yes. We're very tall. It's very nice. You, you guys are gonna love here. some of the tricks that, that this little girl does. Just a minute ago, she she took a skull and swapped it out for a, a dog angel. It was it was really neat. It's some cool tricks. And outside are this the best costumes you've ever seen. Everybody all around just looks like devils and demons. It's it's great. I, I fit right in. See, Never. this is why I'm in this group. They all think that maybe I belong and you are with me and they will be fine. You'll, you'll have to ignore Mara. He thinks he's in a cosplay. He doesn't realize <laughs> I, he's I in do hell. Not. What's a cosplay? I do not. Oh yeah, we're, we're in hell, sure. Right. <laughs> hell is made up this of This is a goddess. <laughs> oh my God, no truer words. <laughs> <laughs> No offense to all the ZC, cosplayers out there, we love you all. You provide yeah. a vital ZC, service. are you out there clipping yet? ZC, <laughs> calling ZC. <laughs> oh, good. Takes it in post, so, we'll take it out. <laughs> so as you are kind of getting to know one another, um, you see the tent one more time kind of part the way aside, and you now see the owner of this particular tent um, enter. This is a sort of closed up shop that you all are in. Some mundane magic items seem to be scattered around on tables. Uh, There are some comfortable seats, some knickknacks, some interesting um, bits from across the realms scattered about here. Um, Though Dara herself only sits on this small wooden, very uncomfortable looking stool, but nevertheless enters in this man from the Eastern portions of the Forgotten Realms, um, tall, kind of wispy, wearing robes, and he is holding a giant insect's head um, that looks like a wasp, maybe. Uh, One of its antennas is just snapped off, but it's this red um, wasp's head, maybe 
maybe almost three feet across with these jagged, torturous looking mandibles. And he brings it forward and says, ah, this is what you wanted? And Dara says, yes, set it down, please. He sets it on the floor in front of her. And she kind of kneels down in front of it, the um, hound-headed angel just behind over her shoulder, uh, sniffing. Mm, yes, seems right. And she go and she wraps her arms around this severed bug head and leans an ear onto its forehead. I hear the heart. You're right, Rascomedes. His heart has not given out. She looks up to all of you. I don't know the reason you're here. Not the precise one. Bill Mater has not shown that to me. But a very, very wise one lies, well, part of him still exists wherever this, as she gestures to the skull, came from. I need you to find Ras the swarmed heart of Raskamedes. Well, what are you waiting for? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Um. But who is Raskamedes? He is my brother. What's your name? We are servants, spawn of Ilmata. He was a powerful deva in his days, and he met an unfortunate end, speaks the um, hound-headed angel. She is right. Thousands and thousands of souls depend on us being reunited. Raskamedes is wise. He will know the way forward. I do not. And Ilmater has only revealed as much to Dara as is necessary. And do we have Raskamedes' head? <laughs> Did I understand that correctly? No. Oh, okay, no. I was like, the hell? Okay. Uh, um, he lies, he lies in a place of these things. I heard it, and I hear the echoes of his heart still beating in this creature. It's wherever it came from. His heartbeat is, well, it's very lovely, very wise. You'll need to find him wherever this came from. Um, anyone trained in it or anyone who would have reason to have been studying the Nine Hells can make an um, Arcana check if they would like. Um, the, but I, I'm like even remembering, like I'm forgetting her name and I named her. Vosreth <laughs> would have studied quite a lot <laughs> at Candlekeep. So cool. ye. And it's an investigation check, you said? Arcana? Or Same religion. Diff. Or religion. <laughs> okay. Whichever. Which you one would has like. the best modifier? <laughs> Poor moi. <laughs> you tell me, Noth. <laughs> oh my god, ew. <laughs> you tell me, Noth. <laughs> oh no. Are you I'm a Visigoth? Or an Ostranoth? A Visigoth? <laughs> I'm actually a Visigoth. <laughs> Okay, we better do boop, 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 crack and dice. Uh, 13 plus eight, because I like that best is 21. Nice. Is that religion or arcana? That's religion. Religion, yes. Um, there are, you know, great beasts and such on the uh, material plane and the other planes. Uh, hell wasps are sort of follow, um, the, there are other bugs in form and their function somewhat, uh, but these are indeed actually fiends, a sort of hellish mockery of the bugs of the material plane that congregate in giant hives 
oftentimes ruled by, or off, always ruled by a single queen. You do not know the method for which, but you do know that their hives tend to hover above the surfaces of Avernus, um, tethered down by chains. So, um, as opposed to wasp hives on the material plane hanging from tree branches and stuff, these rise up from the hellish surface almost like terrible paper mache balloons. Would it be possible for Volshareth to have investigated the skull? Did yeah, that's that? kind like of what I was flavor, That's what, that's what I was thinking. You were looking yeah. at it and that's how um, you um, identified what this is. So she'll turn to the rest of the newly formed party and ask, has anyone else seen one of these before? Not exactly like that. They don't come from the forest that I come from, um, but they look really nasty. Do you have any idea where they are? Um, so I, I've, again, never been <laughs> here, um, but it appears that this particular sort of hell wasp, they live above the plains. So I guess we have to go up somehow. All right, I'm so sorry if you've covered this already. Oh, go ahead. You would know not that high above, so like, you know, hundreds so feet far maybe, above. But not, so not far above. So far. You know, not dirigibles or anything, um, just uh, balloons tethered about 100 feet above the surface. Uh, is kind ah. of what the hives resemble. Okay, so they look like balloons. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll go with that. Hell balloons, okay. Hell balloons. <laughs> Hell balloons. <laughs> Or I'm sorry if you covered this before I got here, but is there like a direction or an area we're supposed to go or do we just wander? She kind of sits there for a second, closes her eyes, then leans her head down again on the severed wasp head, leans her ear against the forehead. And you then places a hand on it, and you all can hear this thump thump, thump thump, thump thump, thump thump, thump thump, kind of echoing out. Do you hear it? Yes. And she kind of then slumps down, looking absolutely exhausted. Follow. I've connected with, I've connected it with you, at least temporarily. All of the beating. Bring back my friend. And then she kind of leans her head against the solid wood bench. Just kind of lays there, crumpled up awkwardly kind of on the side of it. Um, oh, her thing. head against the solid wood. I've, I've, I've done this sort of thing before, except it was in a, in a very large cemetery and it was a bird. And the closer I would get to the right place, the bird would squawk more and squawk more and squawk more. And, and yeah. All right. That was a very interesting anecdote. Squawking so, birds can become very loud. They can become so loud. Yes, they can almost wake the dead too. if that <laughs> Right? Mm -hmm. I wanted to eat this bird after a while. <laughs> I'm, I'm um, still wondering if we're going to get paid. <laughs> oh, hasn't has no one asked about uh, payment? The um, we didn't get paid. Pound <laughs> headed angel is sort of just looking down at this child slumped over the wooden bench, and he looks up and says, "You will receive your just reward when the task is complete." They said that the first one. Okay. Uh, no, that sounded ominous when they said it the last time, too. Um, well, I, I guess we better, like, get going. And there's no need to pay me. I'm, I'm just here to help. I'll have her share. Yeah, that's, that's fine. <laughs> Sh you shall know we? your quarry likely is somewhere far out on the plains of Avernus far away from this safety, so. So did you have a, 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 a means of travel last time or were you on foot in the we're last session? Foot. You're on foot. 
Yeah. Okay. All of you know from journeying here, it's not any journey of any distance is not particularly easy. I will follow the group while I go and let the dog out. Okay. The group brought a dog? (laughs) Yes, it's it's, it's actually a a, a dog-headed angel. He's going to let it out for a minute. Okay, so I have a question just while Jade is gone. This is a legitimate question. So was the skull that Dara turned into the dog angel, was that the head of the being that we saw? No, or they so separate there's uh, separate descriptions there. So when when you arrived, you saw Samus. her with this <laughs> um, <laughs> with this chalice kind of that was created using um, what looked to be an upside down hound skull, and then it was there were infernal metals and such and uh, terrible looking filigree used to complete it and turn it into this goblet. Um, You saw her, as you were entering, just briefly kiss the chalice and then smash it on the ground. The head then re- the, the, um, the, excuse me, the hound's head, the hound's skull, then reformed on its own accord magically, and then the bright light emanated and this hound-headed angel emerged. Um, So she sent you to find the skull, this time she's sending you to find a heart fact that another severed head was involved just kind of <laughs> it's Avernus you know yeah, it's, I was uh, like where did I mean they're, they're everywhere <laughs> yeah you can you can get them at Ikea oh my god there is like oh. a headstand over there you know it's like heads of all the creatures wine, of the nine realms know. just you know this you see this little imp selling severed heads you know it's kind of oh like god. that well, <laughs> Michael's how fun, or how fun. Yeah. Uh, so Juniper has uh, already stepped out of the tent, and when nobody follows her, she just sticks her head back in, and she's like, um, guys, time? <sighs> Coming in. Oh. Any other preparations or anything anyone wants to make before going? Or are you heading right out into the wastes? What is um, available to us at the Wandering Emporium that we might want to visit before heading out? Yeah. So I, I should have, I would have said this in prep we kind of you know just maybe something i forgot to mention but um as far as reasonable material components for spells um you, those of you who mm. would have those feel free to just have them um, okay cool magic item we talked about magic items already but any mundane gear or spell components completely fine that you would have brought them for this you are very high level adventures you would be um, able to source those before coming here didn't the turtle give us an item? I can't remember what item that was. Um, you? Nope. <laughs> nope. See, good with him. Um, get the turtle. Oh, holy water. Holy water. Five vials. Oh yeah, yeah. The he gave you three has vials spoken. of holy water. Five vials of holy Five water. Five vials of holy water. No, Vorpal. <laughs> no, not nice. Vorpal holy water, just regular holy water. <laughs> Vorpal hammer. Okay. All right. So it sounds like that. With that, you guys are taking off onto the plains yes. to find your way, sonaring your way towards this the sound of this beating heart. Uh, as before, those of you uh, who are familiar, um, oops, uh, know that you will need to make a um, uh, survival check to try to identify a way through these planes. They defy reason. Um, the crags, the um, geographical features, you think you are cresting the easy path and suddenly, inexplicably before you lies a chasm that you have to trek all the way around. It seems like the ter- the uh, geography of this place exists only to thwart you um, as mortals in this land. So 
with that. Is that who would us? like to take a stab at? Not me. Um, finding Juniper a way will. Juniper will uh, make an attempt. Okay, Vosharath, are you proficient as well? Um. Oh, I thought we all had to make a a check. Yeah. So. I did ahead Actually, of time. Actually, that is the what I had planned to do. Um, now that I think oh. of it, Juniper, that is a very good start. But let's do a group twenty-seven. Check. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, mine is fifteen. Still good. <laughs> nice. Still, still good. Still 19, good. Nineteen, and it made some really weird noise. Mine is a fourteen. <laughs> it was rolling dice on D and D Beyond as well. Still pretty good. All right. Uh, so the lowest is a 14, yeah? Yeah. Wow, okay. That's a really impressive survival group survival check, guys. Um, and uh, We're experienced adventurers. You are. That is you gonna said be, so um, yourself. <laughs> the, it's going to easily average above the um, 15 requirement. And as such, you will not need to make a save versus a level of exhaustion as I will say the, as we're walking Juniper has a decanter and she is constantly pouring out arcs of water that she is there then by freezing and passing out to the party members to kind of keep them cool like little neck circlets uh little wrist bracelets they melt pretty quickly but it's a it's a way to kind of keep their temperature down and their spirits can I have up. a flower crown <laughs> oh my god of course oh isn't that cute my... Can you, can you just braid the flowers into my hair? <laughs> is that flowers? A, is, yep. Or fur. Is that a chug? It's a decanter, actually. A decanter. Uh, the, 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 the last person I ran into with a jug, it didn't do so well with me. But you seem nice. Oh, don't worry. It's just water. Uh, we're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't died yet, and if you do, I can bring you back. The one. All, I, all I know is, 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 is if, if I had a gold coin for every time that a dead bug's head told me to go get something from some other place, well, strangely, I'd have two gold coins. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> wow. uh, is the survival okay. check also a check for sensing the direction that we're supposed to be going, Peter? Um, not so much. Um, that is... Uh, well, yes, a survival check is basically getting through this place. So it's both trying to follow the um, the beating that you hear, and then also just the navigation um, as far as you have a straight path, but winding your way through the avernal waste and the wreckage and such is the more complicated part. But you do it very well. Um, a combination of finding high ground, uh, looking at little paths, uh, even with just the immense wisdom you have and that, uh, that there's almost a sense of just your own belief factors into it. Just not trusting the, uh, the easy way that you see occasionally. You saw it from afar and you know the way. You're not tempted by any little easy paths or shortcuts. Just continue on, and it is a long, hard slog, but you guys eventually get um, to where you can hear this heartbeat thrumming through the ground, and then all of a sudden, there's complete silence. You have lost the connection to it. (gasps) But in the distance, you can see objects on the horizon, kind of shifting, undulating back and forth in the hot winds. And then you hear overhead, maybe 100 feet, 200 feet up, you see these giant 10 foot long red wasps flying the direction you've been going. And then long ones are nasty enough. (laughs) Yeah, I know, right? And as you're, you see them going, you think they must be returning to a hive. And then you see a bright 
flash of blue light careening towards one of them and it um it hits it and then it it the uh wasp reorients itself and then makes a beeline to wherever that was then you see this bright orange glow emanating from that same area as you look as you head towards it you can it's where you can see four humanoids set upon a hill they are absolutely surrounded and they seem to be battling off a series of these wasps. One of them is in the middle and has um, glowing magic around their hands and seems to be casting, um, trying to cast a spell. They all yell to towards you and say, you there, help us out, please. Uh. Juniper's already running in that direction. Yeah, and all of a sudden, where, 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 is, you, where is she going? You, you see how Mara just like gets this like red glow in her eyes and just like even gets bigger than she already is. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna rage before I run up there. Okay. Um, as you guys um, start to run, they become almost immediately overwhelmed by a um, trio of hell wasps. You can see that uh, three of them are standing to fighting, but you hear a greater buzzing on the um, horizon and you can tell that more are on the way. All right, we will begin this first combat here. I'll put you on the map. Um, if you would look in, sort of scroll down midway, there's a bit of a um, hill that you can see the defenders on. You can see the um, caster back here um, as you run up to join the defense you are not all the way back on the edge of the map you may place yourselves basically in Why this area as you come over the crest not letting me move no. people to the it's not letting me move the people with the stupid thing love it when you talk technical is that you? <laughs> no, like our 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 big our big little names and images. Like normally, I can move those around to like get them out of the way, and it's not letting me move them. So it's like annoying. Oh, me. you're talking about the lower left corner, all of our names. Uh huh. Yeah. If you go like into the move. the settings cog, uh -huh. you can um, you can have it. I'll scroll all the way to the bottom and put chat avatars to names only. Thank you. There we go. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Sorry. Thanks, guys. Oh, is it raging right this now? Looks super cool. familiar. Is that Sholak? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. 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 I recycled. I was waiting it, for you uh, to see if you yeah. noticed. I'm like, oh so, my god, um, <laughs> Uh, I see. I have. I'm waiting on uh, Halmera. Could you please drag your character into the green box for? Uh, oh, to sorry, get sorry. Starting area into no the problem. green box. Where is she? Hold on, I'm trying to find her. Wait, where'd my character go? It's under the uh, my... the journal tab. Where? I'm asleep. Oh, oh, it's not already on the thing. Nope. My bad. Yeah, I didn't realize I had to do on. it again. It's okay. okay. Sorry, guys. I don't play World 20 very often. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Technical tools today are brought to you by Roll20, D&D &D Beyond, Beyond 20, <laughs> Zoom, and other technological terrors. I'm super sorry about those 15 dice rolls, roughly. <laughs> yeah. For That's okay. Initiative. Just click until it works. So it would be 19, right? Because I roll with advantage. Yeah. Yep. Oh, are we, are we rolling initiative right now? Yep, and then Helmera, just let okay. me know yours once. Yeah, I, I also believe you have roll advantage. advantage. Yeah. Yes, I do. So that is gonna be. That's not great. Uh, ba, ba, ba. I, I just like to say, DM, I, I don't like the way you're boxing us in already. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Alias. Is is Mero the tiny guy in the back? Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what a babe. So there are um, a group, again, ahead of you here who are um, in in combat. It looks like the one in back, the sort of creepy looking guy, is trying to cast a spell, um, concentrating very hard on an extended spell. You 
don't know if it's to escape or to do something else. Um, but his companions up here, well dressed, they're all in. Uh, one of them is in um, gleaming studded leather armor. On the two others are in full plate, weapons at the ready. They are holding their own against these fiendish looking wasps. And as you get in position to try to help them, you see a um, large swarm of them descending from the north. And then you see a single additional one um, approaching Jesus. from the southwest. So this is what you see before you. Again, these here seem to be um, holding it in, uh, holding their foes off pretty well, but with the rest of what's going on here, they would be quickly overwhelmed if not for your intervention. So, oops, let me roll a bit of here. Oh, I rolled a natural nineteen for that. That means I get to go that, first. That, 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 so you, so you rolled a nineteen. <laughs> I did. I rolled a natural 19. What are these um, decimal points? That is the dexterity the mods, dexter just in case there's a tie. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Why does mine say 20? I didn't roll a 20. Oh, what did you roll? I rolled a 15. 15. I listened I real came. good. I listened <laughs> okay, I was, that's why I was very right confused. Thing. I was like, is there some <laughs> weird, like, timey wummy stuff going on here? Give it time. Nope. Give it time. No. Nope. He was like, Just I want to brag. But so this, so this thing up here is the one that's trying to cast a it's spell. A, you said this. This thing. is a this is a swarm here. This is a hell oh, wasp swarm. swarm. Okay, um, okay, okay. This guy here, I will put a little um, icon. It looks like he's trying to cast a spell. That is this taking guy. more okay. than like a single round. He is a, an extended casting time spell. Um, and his friends here are holding the line for him. But this thing's gonna come on and swoop in and um, it can occupy your guys' space as it is a hell wasp swarm. So, against, um, let's see who the odd one out is gonna be. That will be uh, me. No, unfortunately, it is going to attack, try to sting at both Marrow and at, um, do, 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 uh, excuse me, I'm just looking at the names. Juniper. So, uh, actually, I believe, Lindsay, do you have Sentinel? I do have Sentinel, so I was just gonna say if, uh, if they do that, then that's an op attack from me. It would, and I believe it would hit an op attack at this point, since you have a 15 foot reach. Is that yes. correct? Yes, exactly. Yep. All right. I want to hear the description of that reach coming. I'm sure. <laughs> Let's hear it. Let's uh, also, hear it. they won't be able to. Okay, yeah. So, so with her, with her glaive, she sees this creature coming in, and there's just like fury in her eyes, and like no one even really notices because she had her cloak on. So literally, you just see this glaive come out and just like go through them and stab right into it. <clears throat> nice. Um, so yeah, uh, as you hold the line against a few of these, um, you can make your. Reaction op tech, if you would like. Okay, yep, I am going to do that. I am raging. I'm going to do Great Weapon Master to add okay. that. That's a nat 20. Um, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Start it up, baby. Dice. Well. Woo! Okay, and I also have something that lets me, yeah, so great. So uh, that's going to be fun. Um, so let's see here. So that's my D10. Did I surprise this creature, by the way? Mm, no. Um, okay. Maybe maybe it was surprised that I your have arms were that long, attack. but it wasn't like it wasn't like physically surprised. It was already okay, coming okay. for the attack. So. Okay, I just need to make sure I'm rolling the right amount of dice here. Okay, so that is. Throw them all. That's great. We do see. You can make one melee attack. Oh, I can make. Okay, I'm gonna get a couple bonus actions out of this. I was just trying. I thought I had an. I can roll an additional. Brutal. There it is. Brutal critical. I can roll an additional weapon die. That's what it is. I have brutal, uh, brutal, brutal critical. Uh, so that's going to be 12, 12. Kills the swarm in one swat. While all the math is happening, it, it, a 20 did hit, right, DM? Oh, and that 20 <laughs> always A lot is. of that brother stuff. <laughs> 
Get out the it's, a 20, it's a 22. It's a 22 plus six. If you really needed to get particular. Okay, so that is do, 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 29 points of damage. Yes. Uh, oh no, plus another three because I'm raging. 32 points of damage. Oof. And then because that was a crit and I have brutal critical, I get to, wait, no, 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 because that was great weapon master. So even though this was a reaction, with great weapon, if I um, score a crit, I get I an additional. Turn. Okay, so that's just for my turn because it says yeah. uh, with great weapon, if I score a crit, then I get a bonus action. Okay, but that's just for my turn. Okay, yeah. So then, yep, yeah, yep. that should be all of that. Excellent. It also stops in its place. It was going to be yes. able to attack multiple creatures as it is a huge swarm, but since you have oddly swap. enough stopped a swarm in its spot, it can only oh. attack Juniper. So, uh, which is, which is uh, better because its attack is based on how many creatures it can surround. It is not one that just gets its regular multi-attack. It attacks based on its space. So, that is a um, that is fortunate. Well so, done. So, all right, let's let's attack Juniper. Do let's. Sorry, I just almost you can, uh, you can knocked miss my monitor off my desk. Um, <laughs> He's so excited nine. and he just can't hide it. He's How's eighteen against Juniper? Juniper does not take any damage from an 18. Wow. wow. Okay. The um, stinger um, just either bounces off carapace or whatever, but it does not uh, get through. Very cool. All right. Uh, Vosharef, it is your turn. Okay. Uh, so Vosharef's first thought is going to be reaching the people who are currently under attack. <laughs> Um, and so if I were to attack with a cantrip and then move out of the space, would I incur attack, an attack of opportunity? From the if storm? you do anything but disengage or have a feature that would prevent an op attack, yes, you would uh, provoke it. Right, 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 right. Okay. Um, let's see. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do then instead is try to light this sucker up. So I will cast. No way! Um, Scorching Ray. Is there like a center of the swarm where I can kind of send these attacks? Um, it's just, it's all going to be the same AC. Okay, cool. So, um, is, uh, do we have like a number of the swarm or is it kind of like how many? It's above like... half right now is what I will say. Okay. Um, okay half so its I'm... strength. Uh, you saw one of the smaller ones did get killed by um, Halmera's strike, but it is still um, at strength at the moment. You will also okay. just so you know, um, Scorching Ray is a ranged attack and you're in melee combat with it right now. So um, the attacks would be at disadvantage. You can take five feet back to try and negate that again that's still that opportunity attack what about yeah because i oh this might be good what about uh burning hands you could do burning hands yes <laughs> so i will cast burning hands and uh well, Shereth will put her fingers together. She'll start doing finger tutting. No, she's just going to do the one, <laughs> the one thing. And she's going to mutter the word Foss. And from this area, she's going to send forth a conical explosion of flame. And so okay. each creature within a 15 foot cone must make a dexterity saving throw. Die! You're not, like, putting me in that cone, right? Just checking. No. If you, uh, Vosharath, if you step one square to the left, you would not provoke an attack, yes. and you could <laughs> Sorry. safely, yeah. I'm like, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> no, just kidding. So, um, the swarm doesn't even seem to move, and as your flames <gasps> cascade over the carapace, it seems to be unaffected by the flame. It's immune guys, to fire I'm damage. You the light cleric. That's, like, all of my shit. <laughs> oh no, I, I've done this before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Well, that was Artem. How did you not learn from Artem's mistake? Because <laughs> I was like blacked out with terror. <laughs> it's fair. Is there anything else you would like to do on your turn, Vosharath? Um, let's see. Well, I do. Well, I don't know if I can actually use it since I did a, a little cute little spell. Um, but oh <laughs> no, there's nothing I can do. All right, we will then go on to Juniper. Just quickly, massive thank you to Pat Draws for 500 bits and Alias oh, Prime for a thousand bits. We're very close to going for a hype train. That's just started, so I will count them up at the end, and then we'll do the shout outs. So I just wanted to quickly say thank we you. We have hype train. We do have hype train. Yay! Awesome. Thanks, everyone. All right. Uh, so Juniper is is currently in the middle of this swarm, and you see uh, you see the wasp trying to sting her, but her skin is glowing, and they're kind of deflecting off of the glow. Uh, and she brings her hands together, and uh, you see her call out, and her eyes glow blue, and she casts frostbite in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the swarm. I need a Constitution okay. saving throw, please. Constitution saving throw. Oh, um, that's a uh, that's a natural die. L as a natural one. So um, <laughs> Excellent. I don't think I'm getting it all the way up there. So. I'm pretty sure you're correct. Uh, that is 14 points of cold damage, uh, and it will have disadvantage on its next attack. Will it now? On yes. top of that. I am vulnerable to cold damage. I will take double that damage that you have just said. Lovely. Eight damage and still be at disadvantage, as you've said. Cool. And uh, I will use this opportunity to uh, scoot out of the swarm. Okay. All right. Marrow. Okay. Um... I'm going to go for an attack. I'm going to be using my short sword, which is magical, and uh, I do not need advantage for sneak attack because someone is within five feet of it. Is that correct? Correct. Sounds good, right? So let's see if I can hit it. Rolling a 20 to hit. 20 just hits. Ready, and... This oh my dice gosh. bar, so much um, dice. That is nine piercing magical damage and eighteen sneak attack damage for a total of 27, 28, 28 magic damage. Big time damage by you guys. Um, it is looking, it's starting to dissipate, but you think it is still over half its strength. And uh, as I, uh, I first step back away from it five feet away and then trip and stumble forward into its midst <laughs> okay <laughs> interesting uh, but I indeed did move out of its range and then back in okay interesting and good to know um, that brings us to the actual turn of Palmera yes so um I'm just going to lash out at whoever is closest to me, I guess. You have the one that it, you stopped it in its range right there. So you with your big old lanky arms and the probably not lanky, but just long arms and your long, long weapon. It is in. Uh, yeah. It is and I actually chat. just realized I, I fucked up my crit anyways. I didn't roll double, so that's fine. He should probably have been dead, but I'm going to attack him again. OK. So she's strong. Um, I am I'm still raging. Um, so I'm going to attack this recklessly. That is going to be a with the with the minus five. That's going to be uh, a 19 to hit. <laughs> Just barely. Yes. Oh, wow. OK, so. Uh, 
29 points of damage for my first attack. Oof. Now it's uh, gone it... to half its strength as a swarm. Okay, so I'm gonna attack again. That is gonna be uh, six, uh, 22 to hit. Absolutely. Uh, it's gonna be uh, 34 points of damage. <laughs> and then I, just, I, I am just, gonna... Just... Oh. She's just like, good, good. Uh, and then I am going to, with my polar mastery, uh, bonus action, hit it with the backside of my glaive. Oh, I, I just yeah. see her like swatting this thing over our heads. We're all short. Like I was thinking like, that too, like, oh, everyone Like a mom protecting like some children. Like, no, 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 no. So that is gonna be... Uh, 20, uh, dirty 20 to hit. Uh, yes, yep. <laughs> She's like decimating uh, this in one turn. That's gonna be, oh wait, no, I only roll a d4 for, uh. Be dang close. For that, yeah, so that's. D4 plus 17, right, so. Uh, cause I still have the great arm, right? Yep. So yeah, so that's 19 points of damage. All right. Okay, Ooh, is it is definitely well below its now. half strength. It is still alive. It is a massive swarm, but it is not. Um, it is not as. as it's it's uh, a giant fly swatter, is what it is. It's, just, yeah. it's not as it's not as swarmy as it was a minute ago. <laughs> nope, no, definitely not. Um. Hmm. You know. Co-ops are intelligent, but they're not that intelligent. Man, I didn't... They didn't think this out. Because as this one approaches... God damn it. <laughs> as it hits this place... Um, it's been your turn, so you can react again. Oh, I can! If Yay! You would like. I would like oh to! <laughs> uh... Okay, well, I might not I get this one. Uh, oh no, okay, so without um, Great Arm, that's gonna be a 21 to hit. Okay, as just as a rule too, you have to, do have to declare it on the attack. So um, you have to decide to roll with the minus five when, before yeah. you roll the dice. So okay. it, yeah, gotcha. just, yep. but uh, yeah, if, if it's a non-Great Weapon Master, yep. 19 yes. is the AC you're looking for, so. Okay, great. So that is going to be um, 17 points of damage. Okay. And it frustratingly and stops. They cannot right move now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Did not, uh, did not think about that. So there we go. <laughs> Bring us. Uh, that's all that can do. The other ones will uh, see. pre-rolled this damage and stuff before so you see this battle continue there's some slight shifting here but the um, mercenaries for now are still holding off their respective hell wasps it is now Calius's turn Car Carulus I mean it's finally my go um hold an action I dare you ah sorry <laughs> yeah um Carolus quickly mutters a word and instantly goes invisible. That was cast with um, quickened. Okay, I cool. Move to here and then point at the swarm and fire three Eldritch blasts. Uh, let's see. Only three. Only three. 27 to hit. You got um, yes. Oh, invisible. 15 would miss. Correct. And natural 20. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Take him down. Here come the bug zapper. <laughs> so that is 14. 14. Nice. Jeez. So seven damage. That's total? Yep. Isn't it 
41? Did you, did you get the no, genie's wrath twice? No, the genie's wrath doesn't come twice. And it comes on the ah, first gotcha. one. Ah, gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> and it moves back 20 feet. The whole swarm. <laughs> because nothing oh, says it doesn't. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, I've already used my reaction. I was like, oh, but they're moving away from me, which means Plus technically they provoke attack forced. of opportunity. Yeah, it's forced movement too, so. I know, um, I know. But if, if only. I was looking there for level five greater invisibility done to people, but I don't think it does. Um, so I what has been a swarm die. is now about like, you know, a, basically a single hell wasp, um, <laughs> which is smart enough like, to know. One hell wasp it, is like, oh shit, <laughs> stay away from the big bug zapper. But by my goodness, I would like to try to hit something this combat. Um, I have a 19 to hit marrow. Uh, was that a disadvantage? It is a disadvantage. <sighs> Still a 19. <laughs> ah, right. I guess that uh, hits. Okay. Um, very good. Take uh, 17 oh, points. Oh, wait a minute. Of... Uh, can I see that? Uncanny dodge. How many points? Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, it is at half strength, so you take nine points of piercing damage and um, 17 points of fire damage. <clears throat> and please make a constitution saving throw. We're so close to a level five hype train. That's another $50 for crack advice. Oh, wow. If we hit a level five. Thank you, friends. You guys do it in the chat. Mm -hmm. Oh, my con save is only 11. You guys see Mero suddenly tense up and um, fall over. It's Mero, you feel your body tighten into paralysis. Oh, jeez. Condition. Paralyzed. And this um, unfriendly wasp is then going to follow up with its sword talons. Stay nice. Oh, paralyzed target. Oh Burn my gosh. Down. I have a natural one and a natural four. That means you went after somebody already down. I know it's so cruel. It will miss. The dice gods were like, no. It's going to die of fail of embarrassment, probably. <laughs> uh, but, Good. All right. Good. Stupid Good bug. Vosharef. Yes. Don't attack it with fire. Oh, it's my turn. I thought you were going to attack me. I was like, no. Do you want to I quickly wish. do the uh, hype train stuff? It's literally just finished. Oh, yeah. You want to do it? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, we just completed a level four hype train. So that is another $25 gift card that we give away at the end of the stream. Um, massive thank you to Patrols for 500 bits. Alias for 4,000 bits and two gifted subs. Manx for 300 bits, MCR Music for 300 bits and a resub, Lindsay for the resub, and Anonymous, thank you very much for five gifted. So hopefully oh, I wow. didn't miss everyone. I think I got everything. But massive thank you guys. Much appreciated. Um, uh, feel free, guys. Uh, well, as of um, immediately, uh, you. this is a thing we do here for the generous generosity of our chat uh please all take inspiration uh, as characters um yeah and how do you use in, how do you uh so bef once bef once for a any d20 roll before the roll you can decide to roll with advantage um you cannot you must decide to roll it before you see the result yeah. though it's not a re-roll no. gotcha yep cool. where you going Vosharath? I was about to say, I've taken the liberty of moving my token. Um, it's great. So, by reaching what looks to be a sort of raised area, does that require me? Is that. Um, we'll is that just say that's five feet up, not difficult. Um, okay. It's not, but not difficult terrain. No. Okay. Uh, you sense. can see that this one caster here is heavily heavily wounded, bleeding profusely onto the ground. It looks like it's just barely staying conscious as he's going through these magical symbols, drawing arcane sigils into the air. Oh, buddy. Um, let me see. So 
my thought had been, since I know now that none of my spells are going to be useful, <laughs> um, that I would... I, um, let's see. I have to... Transference. Okay, so I'm going to do something nifty that I never got to do as Maris. <laughs> um, which is life transference. So I okay. will take damage um, and give it to the, give those damage points to the, the friendo on the ground. Okay, interesting. Um, mm -hmm. How much, uh, how much is that that you give? Let's find out. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a roll, okay. I could regret this. I, I, I could think like I shouldn't have tried to be a hero. Nineteen. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you see him <gasps> breathe a bit easier and look up to you, kind of um, surprised, but maybe a bit more heartened. Uh, sort of taking a bit out of this exhaustion, nods at you, and then continues casting his spell a bit faster. Cool. Um. So, He's got to look up to you. Now you're standing on a rock. <laughs> hey. Um, and so that will be the end of my turn. Beautiful. Juniper. All right, let's not mess with a good thing. Uh, she's going to cast another frostbite at the remainder of the swarm. DC 17. Uh, con okay. save. Um, I've got an 8 plus some stuff. Plus not enough. Okay. Um, so with yeah. its vulnerability, that is going to be 24 points of damage, uh, plus another disadvantage on its next turn if it's not wow. dead yet. Yeah. And with that, um, you do see the last two kind of freeze up and then fall to the surface. You've made very disappointingly quick work of that swarm. Good job, guys. Um, she will... Uh, with her movement, she will run forward, and as she's passing Halmera, she's gonna just take a, a, a quick high five and step <laughs> uh, step in front of her uh, to face this next wasp during its next turn. Nito, um, Mero, sorry, you spend I your have... turn being paralyzed. Hold on, and um, Vosharef, yes. So, sorry, no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, him. Um, but. Our good friend Z pointed out that uh, our my casting friend actually gets twice the amount of health back, so thirty-eight. Oh, that's cool. That that's really nifty. Right? Um, yeah. He so feels way I better. Know. Yeah, oh my gosh, way he feels better. Amazing. <laughs> Do I get a saving throw or something? Um. Yes. Please? At the end of your turn, you can try to shake off the poison. What kind of saving throw do I get? Constitution. Black. Fifteen. You're no longer paralyzed. Yay, I have no active conditions. Yes, but you shake off the poison. You feel that ch chilling, burning sensation throughout your muscles give way. And now you can, well, next turn you can do something. <laughs> uh, all right, back to Halmera. <clears throat> All right, uh, I am going to <laughs> go up to Juniper, give another high five, and this time strike out at this little duty here. Uh, I am going to do it recklessly with a great weapon. Recklessly. So that is probably not gonna hit. That's gonna be um, ba, 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 ba. nineteen is your number that you're looking for. Okay, so yeah, that's a seventeen to hit. So that's not gonna hit. So for my second attack, I'm just gonna roll. Your straight. first miss of the night. Well, mess. I second. I attack. know. So my second attack is straight roll, no great weapon. So um, that is a nineteen to hit. Okay, that yep, hits. So that meets. Okay, yeah. So seven. 17 points of damage. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I will bonus action, hit him with the other side. Uh, to the 24 to hit. Uh-huh. 
Oof. And then that's going to be, but it's just a D4. So that's going to be eight points of damage. Or, sorry, 11 points of damage. Okay. Anything else on your turn, movement or anything like that? Uh, I am going to be, I'm going to stay uh, 15 feet from him. So he is within my range, but I am not within his range. Well, okay. I mean, if he's melee range, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm also right next to Juniper. So obviously if, if, this little guy attacks her or um, moves into my area, I will provoke. Right. So you know it with the provoking opportunity attacks, it's already within your range. So if it moves closer, but it's still within your reach, you don't get that attack again. It does. Um, that's... Hold on, Marsh, right? Well, it's also if he attacks anyone other than me because I attacked... Uh... That's only within five feet a... of you. The Sentinel's only five yeah. feet. But if it moves within your threat range with polar mastery, it, it provokes. Yeah, so polar, but it's also because I am, uh, I did that. Wait, isn't there another something? Yeah, it was Sentinel. Yeah, if part it goes of Sentinel, after... if it moves, it will stop it in its tracks. That part of Sentinel stays, yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah, the provoking so only if it's, it's in within it's, five feet. The, 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 the key word here is when they enter your reach. Yeah. So it is currently within your reach. So it, it's only when it enters within 15 feet of you. It's not oh, okay. whenever it moves within 15 feet. So you could move right. back and then trigger it again once it moves within 15, but it doesn't right. trigger Cause... from going 15 to 10 or from 10 to five. But oh, it gotcha, trigger... gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, imagine you have a circle. It's just when you cross the line. Um, okay, it's cool, not cool. moving within. So if that okay. changes your movement, feel free to go ahead and adjust. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'll just go back a little bit here or whatever. Okay. So it can, yeah, because it's going to have to approach her to hit her, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Yep. That works. Um, with that, it can move here, which is its regular just five feet moving from 10 feet to five feet. Looking at you, Halmyra, because you have attacked recklessly and have left an opening from that reckless attack. So it mm -hmm. is going to um, try to sting you. Yep. Um, now, is this considered, this would be considered piercing damage? Uh, yes. Okay. Where is my, where's my heck wasp? All right. Me. All right. Uh, first attack. Sting at advantage. I have a 26 to hit. That is, but I have resistance, so okay. I'll take half of that. Yep. Uh, you take oof, half of six, so three points of piercing and then seven points of fire damage. I need a constitution saving throw from you. Okay. Uh, 25. All right, oh, you are not even close to poisoned. Uh, it is magical damage. I don't think that makes a difference with Barbarian Rage, but- uh, No, right. it's just psychic damage that I'm not resistant okay. to. And then I have a 22 for the second hit. Yes, that does hit. Mm -hmm. 13 points of piercing again, reduced to six. Copy that. Not as impressive as it hoped. <laughs> So am I able to use my reaction to attack him since he did move back into my area? So I, I apologize if I explained it badly before, but it's only when it enters your reach. So because it was within your reach when it started its turn, because your reach is 15 feet. So it's only right, when so it- Right, so I moved back 20 to be just did outside you? of its reach. Yeah, I did. I. I don't I, know how you're- Am I not seeing squared. that on roll 20 or is that Oh my... yeah, sorry. I, I'm so not used to moving tokens. That's totally my bad. I know yeah, I had I, verbally I... said I moved back, but I didn't move my token. Okay, I was confused sorry. and that I'm makes- uh, It's fine, it's fine. Um, I still, I'll still take all the attacks and the damage. That's totally fine. Okay, uh, but, but yeah, but go ahead and uh, in that case, no, I'll just do a reaction. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, I'm fine with that. Little fine. Compromise. You're fine. Don't uh, worry so about that's... it. So that's. Indeed, it's no big deal. <laughs> uh, so that's going to be 15, 20, uh, 26. Yeah, that's going to hit. And then that's going to be 13 points of damage. 
And you also halve the fire damage. Oh, do I have the fire damage? Because you're no. a bear totem. Oh, that's oh. right. Yeah. So that instead of barbarian. seven that's goes cool. back to that's three, right? Yeah. Because it was seven fire. Yeah. So have that. Okay. You got Z in chat, Peter. It's all good. He's oh, got, he's, he's thank got you him, guys. He's so, got it covered. It's my first time playing this character, guys. Thank you for bearing with me. I've I played my character twice and I still don't know what he does. It's all good. I, I Eldritch Blast stuff. It doesn't seem to be hurting your uh, efficacy on the board right now, because you just like obliterated everything in two seconds. That's right. Like I've gotten most of it. I'm just like, there's a few things I'm missing. Okay. <laughs> you got this. Okay, so that's that's my thing. Yeah, that was my reaction. Cool. Um did you roll the attack? Sorry, did I hear? Did uh, I yeah, that it? what did I just say? Uh so that was Sorry, like I have 26, the, you said? 20, like, 26 hits. So yeah, go ahead and roll no. the damage. Oh, yeah, it was a 26 to hit. The damage was, I already said it, but um, let me see if I can remember what I said. I think it was like 13, I think is what I said. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that would be 13 gotcha. points of damage. 13. Yeah, sorry. Noted. Boom. All right. Um, let's see, I forgot that turn. So um, you can see the. Um, uh, as the combat continues over to the side, then um, the uh, caster figure kind of moves back and um, looks up to you, um, Vosareth, and kind of is seeming to try and take refuge under you, trying to find at least a little bit of safety. So he's coming and kind of standing under this rock right now. And now it's Karyalus's turn. Just a quick big thank you to Banks, who's just brought is the first person to buy some merch from us, from our new merch hey. store. Oh, fun! Hey. Merch. New merch hey. store! Hey, Manx. <laughs> Yay, Manx works. I am going to hit the one that hit our Barbarian uh, with Eldred Blast. Or 26. 18. Miss me. Misses, 18 misses. Oh my god. And a 22. All right, two hits. 15, 27 damage, and it moves 20 foot back. <laughs> so this com this combo is going to be impossible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. Hi, My everybody. We're level 12. So well with Lindsay's character. I can't believe how well it works with Lindsay's character. Okay. <clears throat> um, anything else, Carryless? Um. Nah. <laughs> That's enough. That's enough. Bonus action gloat. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Your the caster seems to have uh, moved towards you now, emboldened and casting much faster, and seeming um, actually has like. You've given him actually a will and a belief in the, that he might survive. That's so nice. Um, so, uh, so Vosharath, I'm hoping that these guys, so I do have a question though. So would radiant damage, is there only one way to find out? One way to find out. All right, let's go. So I will cast the uh, cantrip of ra Word of Radiance as my action. And so um, she again will focus all of her power inward and she'll say Fos Ilyara and toss it out. Word cool. of Radiance. I believe What's you need the to range move on five feet of them. Yeah, to do beans. it. But you can easily Hot move beans. up to them and do, do it. The hottest beans. <laughs> to Hell beans. Hell beans. Hell beans. <laughs> all right. Uh, so now I'm next to this, like, golem-looking yeah. guy. Yes, and you can word of oh, radiance it. <laughs> Rolled what? a natural two on my save, so go ahead and roll your Aye. damage. Okay, cool. Let's see. Peter, I'm okay. anxious because you've been rolling so poorly. I'm waiting for, like, a wave of crits to come. Oh, yeah. And, like, yeah. We'll see. Nine. Nine. The, uh, the hellish dead, energy right? 
courses over it. Um, it is not quite dead. It is very hurt, and it does take radiant damage. Yay! That's the thing I needed to know. Yeah. Now I'm all up in its waspy grill. You are up in its waspy grill. <laughs> and not like a car that drove along the highway and got a bunch of wasps on it. Like, anyway. Uh, hey! Juniper! So Juniper, Juniper looks back at Helmer and says, you got this, right, girl? And she runs uh, without even waiting <laughs> oh for a God. response. Uh, she Oof. runs west and uh, she will cast uh, another frostbite at the uh, hell wasp that Vosharef is uh, is next to. Constitution saving throw, please. Mm hmm. Can I make one of these? I don't know. It's oh. pretty high. Uh, I have uh, eighteen. That will actually pass. Okay. So Half damage or just or is uh, it a nothing. cantrip? It's a cantrip. <gasps> Ooh, okay. Deal. All right. And Any other actions? Her. No, she's just kind of swearing under her breath, and uh, that is the end of her turn. Understood. Meryl. Well, crap. I just there's there's nothing near me at all. I'm not a range fighter. Sorry. Um, eh, I am going to attempt to move over. As my mouse dies, yay. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And that's my range. And then I'm going to dash 5, 10, 15. Yeah. There. Okay. And bonus action. What can I bonus action? You can dash again. Run up to him. Show him who's boss. Dash again. You're just... What, what is that option called on my character sheet? What's the thing called? Super Dash. No. Is it called Super Dash? <laughs> no, it's not at all. Oh, Jade man, knows what I it's called. It were, I wish it were. But, but hide? What's the thing? The thing that I can bonus action thing? Dodge? Hide. Dodge? Hide? Cunning action. Right. Yeah, I'll... I'll uh, I can't really hide out there in the open. That sucks. I don't want to hide behind the dude. You, you can still, so act, you can still action. You could, because you could have done a bonus action dash. So you yeah, can still I'll throw just stay. I'll, okay, I'll do that. I'll do uh, regular movement, cunning action dash, and then hold an action to attack anything that comes within range that is violent. Yeah, okay. Thank Where's you, Jade. Yeah, so I know you know that goblin stuff. <laughs> It's the bugbear's turn. All right. Still, so, um, I am going to how? Okay. Oh, this, there's the ruler thing, right? So how far away am I from? So I am nowhere near any of these guys, am I? It's still the one you've been not hitting. super close. And there's one more yeah. wasp that's gonna come. Oh yeah, you. here we go. Ha ha! I can do that guy. Sweet. So I am going to Just the hero jump off the edge. Okay, I'm gonna because I have 40 feet of movement. Bugbarian jump. How far down or... is that, Peter? Oh yeah. Ten so feet. if I have 40 feet of movement, I can get down here. Uh yes. So okay. you could jump, or um, it's only 10 feet. So I mean, you're gonna be able to get in range regardless. So. Okay, cool. Difficult uh, terrain so... over the side, but it doesn't matter. Okay, cool. So I'm here, and then I am going to uh, recklessly, with great weapon mastery, um, attack this big boy. That is going to be 10. Uh, a 21 to hit. Up. Oh. Okay. And then that's going to be 24 points of damage. That's it for that one. <laughs> OK, great. Uh, I mean, I get a bonus. Act well, I get more attacks and stuff, but I've used. I used all my movement to get down here, right? 
probably. Yes, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So then I guess I'm just gonna. Well, let's see. Actually, how far? What is the range on this? 120 feet? Yeah, it's about um, 85 feet from you. It's a little hard to see since it's up a 10 foot ledge, but yeah, you can just see the top of the wasp kind of buzzing over. I by mean, the... why not? Let's 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 throw a javelin at it. Okay, so that will be disadvantage. I think it's at the long range. Yeah, for a yeah. javelin. Yeah, so oh, javelin is. Uh, it's only I, melee I, attacks, I, right? I, well, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, reckless yeah. is melee, so it's thirty feet or one hundred and twenty feet for the uh, the javelin. So you okay. said at disadvantage. Correct. Okay, so the first roll was a sixteen. The seven was a fourteen. Twenty three to hit. That still does it. Okay, so that's the d six plus five. That's, that's going to be ten points of damage. Okay. And um... that, I mean, I. I have a bonus action, but I'm not gonna. I can't use it. So, gotcha. Um, unless, yep, nope. That's all I got. Okay, the um, hell wasps go now. Um, let's see. Uh, Liz, please roll a d20. You want to roll high. If you roll below ten or below, it attacks you. Well, if I want to roll high, there's only one dice. That will fit that need, and it's my cracking <laughs> dice. Well done. <laughs> my God, thank you. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Cracking dice. <laughs> I mean, I rolled so high. <laughs> <Roll that. laughs> that would be a, a six. All right, two attacks coming at you. Oh, a bad one, and a natural Bob nine. Beans. This better. This is. I'm telling you, this it'll turn, turn around, around for you, Peter. I'm telling you, uh, this is yeah. just. We need to kill this. It, it happens to every DM, Peter. It's I have a okay. nine and a twelve to hit you. <laughs> I know. When right? you need a dice to save you, roll Kraken dice. There you go. I rolled Kraken too, so we'll see. Oh, uh, and the fight continues. Okay, this is um... hell beans. Hell beans. So at. The... <laughs> At this point, with your guys' combined effort, partially because of um, some intense synergies and because you have healed the caster, um, you're going to be able to make it through the rest of this fight without any issue. Um, these other hell wasps have taken some damage, and you see this caster in the beginning kind of look back and more energy comes to his hands, and you can see him say... <sighs> Thank you. She looks towards you, um, Boshareth. Says, I only have another few seconds. Um, then Is there something we can do to help you? What are you looking for? Um, well, we're, we're looking for the, the heart of, um, this is so strange. I don't, can I help you? Quickly, okay, go. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Need? Um, Raskamedes. The, the heart of Fraskamedes? I no, don't know who that is. What is it? Um, it's only we're looking for a nest. Here. Oh, yes, we're looking for a nest. There's a dozen. We plundered six of the six of them to the east before we were trapped. Where are the other you, ones? He's, he kind of gestures off to the west. There's the west, but there's one that's particularly dangerous. They're coordinated creatures, but something has driven them inside mad. What? Look for the one with the the amber coloration on the outside. And struggling. my pocket, my spell? left pocket, as it looks like he's just holding this spell and it's about to go off. Take it, the pouch in my right pocket. Do it. Um, Juniper no. reaches in. Oh, 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 I was gonna count the spell. I was gonna count the spell he's spell. Are you really? <laughs> no. All right, no. so you take this little pouch from his pocket and then suddenly in a flash of light, it seems he and his companions vanish as if teleported from the very plane itself. Ooh. What? It's very quiet. Where's except the, where's, for then where's the a string? subtle thum -thum, thum -thum, thum -thum sound oh, in again. the distance. Can we can what we sense taken? the direction? Oh I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say what have I taken from the pocket? 
Um, you find what is um, the guts in its pockets? <laughs> you find a uh, scroll of uh, fourth level aid, and then you find two potions of superior healing okay. that he has left behind. Now, since you uh, rescued them and since you're healing, you both rescued them and satisfied the condition of healing him and helping the caster complete his spell, um, as he's then pointed out the location of this um, particular hive. It will be no tr trouble to get there. Though, once you do find this particular hive, your confidence wanes just a bit when you see what this really is. At least 100 feet in diameter, maybe 200 feet tall, hovering 100 feet off the ground. Balloon was maybe not the right word. Anchored to the ground by infernal iron, you see it's not immediately apparent what is holding this nest aloft. But then you see shifting across the surface, little bits flutter. And you can tell that the, these are wings, feathered wings too. And as you look cl more closely, these wings clearly belong to the bodies of celestials stuck in this hellish waxy substance, fluttering their dead eyes, looking out as if possessed by um, the infernal essence that brought them here. Their bodies are bloated, desiccated, and they flap up towards a heaven that they will never be able to return to. At this horrid sight, I need everyone in the party to make a wisdom saving throw. Is it a magical effect, Liam? This is a... It is not. Cracking this it, one. Is it to be frightened? Yeah. That, that was no. going to be my question as well. It no. is not okay. versus fright. I wrote a natural 22. One. The deeper horror. Uh, 21. 16. Okay. All right. 16. So, Karyalas, what was the total on that natural one? Seven. All right. Please roll a d100. Oh, jeez. It's never good. Any, if anybody has, anybody has any healing, I could use it. Oh, no. What was the roll? 22. Um... All right, roll a D three. Oh man, I totally forgot. Why are you I had these. <laughs> oh, Lindsay, read your inventory. Three. <sighs> you, <laughs> you guys stuff, look Lindsay. and Carlos. Starts... I have winged boots. I totally forgot I had winged oh, boots. Oh, you could have and... flown. <laughs> um, so so you guys look. Carlos collapses onto the ground, weeping <gasps> intensely. Carlos, you are incapacitated and cannot stop weeping for the sheer sight of this. Um, I you see this in my book. You have, no con you have no control over yourself. You're completely incapacitated. The heart is clearly within this massive hive somewhere, and um, you can hear it within. You can sense it, and there's strange... Some of the... You can actually see some of the hell wasps crawling on the outside. The ones that attacked were regimented. They had a purpose. These jitter about, their wings twitching, their heads twitching about as if driven mad themselves by some type of um, force inside. Your objective lies within this horrid hive, and we will um, get to that part after we take a little bit of a break. So my friends, first of these, all... Would, would these be considered a willing beast? Uh, so based on your checks earlier, you know that these are, well, beast-like, these are in fact fiends. So they are closer okay. to, they're actually devilish entities rather than, um, uh, okay, than beasts, ob the, rather than creatures of nature, beasts. Yeah. So copy that. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. But we'll, we're going to take a quick break before we get to the inside of the hive. 
Welcome back, everyone. This is the vast emptiness of grace. We are doing a little mini campaign to fill in while Trapped by Hope is on hiatus. So let's jump right back into this. Group, you know that the heart of a specific angel lies in the center of this hell wasp hive, which rises in front of you. You see twitchy hell wasps kind of patrolling and walking across the surface of this. It is about 100 feet up and different chains arc from the Avernus surface to uh, and um, are secured to it on the sides. You see a number of holes as well that are clear entry points for the hell wasps themselves. Beyond that, there is no obvious path. So when Carlos went down, can I identify Aside from the terror, like, can I identify what kind of trauma he's suffering from? Yeah, sure. Make a uh, make a medicine check, and Carlos is just frantically oh. weeping on the ground. Oh, so, what are you want about? I'm fine, but then I'll just remember. No, yeah. you're not not even close. And are, are uh, these uh, hell wasps like the death wasps that have like been invading the U.S. and like killing? Is that is, are <laughs> these are even worse? <laughs> They're a lot bigger. Uh, Murder Apex wasp. murder hornets, basically. Uh, yeah. that is murder a 20... hornets. That's the word I'm looking for. Murder hornets. Sorry. <laughs> no fire damage on those, though. Um, uh, 23 <laughs> on my medicine check. Okay. Um, it's a very good medicine check. As you look, um, you, uh, you've seen something like this before. Um, he is suffering from a form of uh, madness inflicted by this site right now. Is this, it, just metaing a little bit, is this something that I think I would be able to remedy through a greater restoration? Um, does it say so in the spell description? I, uh, it says uh, you touch someone with positive uh, energy to undo a debilitating effect um, charmed, petrified, cursed magic item. Uh, I, I didn't know if that was like a kind of curse. You say like the madness. Um, I can post it. You, in. with that, uh, with, with that medicine check and your own knowledge of your own, um, capabilities, you feel it's likely that your that a greater restoration that very powerful healing magic would um do the trick do i also think he'd be able to uh uh shake it off at some point or is he is he kind of down for the count uh possibly you just don't know how long okay Sorry, hold please. My timer is going off. Uh, I'm going it's to. Like someone's, someone's I, it's, it's me. I'll be right back. <laughs> Beep. Um. So I was gonna check in with the party <clears throat> and see who needs to be healed. <laughs> I think Careless is probably good. He seems fine. So. You know when you just you think you you mute you're like you're not, your mic's open and then you press the button to mute to cough, but you unmute to cough. That's one. Oh, yeah. Things. Yeah. Also, so, um, okay. I was just asking Sam. It's, no, it's OK. <laughs> I was just asking um, who needs healing. Me. Oh, definitely needs healing. Yes. So Juniper is going to look at uh, Carlos, like kind of just I assume you're in the fetal position on the ground and uh, she's going to go up to him and she's just going to kind of put her arms around you gently and she's going to be like, OK, so I know this is really horrible and I know you're really freaked out and I'm totally with you on that. But we are here for a reason and we are going to get through this together. All right. I need you to be strong for me. And she's going to cast a, a greater restoration on you. And um, Carola, suddenly the effect fades and uh, you are returned to normal. Having been aware, you were just rolling on the ground weeping for about a minute or so. And oh. Halmera just walks up and is like standing over you like, 
Are you okay? What, 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 it was what acting. What is going on with all this? Just it act, was acting. acting. <laughs> yeah, also, you owe me 100 gold, but you're welcome. And she, uh, she kind of, like, stands you up and uh, puts her arm Also, your, your hair looks even shinier now that she's healed you. <laughs> <laughs> I have a gift. Can't, I can't do it. Exclusively Lanza products. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, um, oh my god. The wasp of my ear, I was like, is there a mosquito I know. in my house? I know. I thought the exact same thing. I was like, what is that? What is that noise? Is, it, is, yeah. is my phone ringing? What, what is that? I know. Like, and there's some sort of like I'm sitting gooey. here. I'm sitting here thinking about greater restoration hair conditioner, and then I'm like, bzz, bzz, what the fuck? <laughs> There's some sort of like honey goop. There it is. It's like fucking <laughs> murder hornets. I hate it. Nice, um, right? So, yeah. <laughs> Good job on the um, sound design. Good job. Yes, great job. Great job. So, I'm going to cast. Because um, did everybody take some damage during that oh, battle? Mm -hmm. I'm fine. I did. Not a ton. Oh, I, I thought I was the only one. Okay. <laughs> no, I, t I, I, I got I got attacked. You got hit a few times. Me. Yeah, I'll merit it. Yeah, because I attacked recklessly, so I, I took some. Yeah. So I will cast Mass Cure Wounds oh. at level five. So that will be 3d8 plus, so it'll be 5d8 plus three. Are you rolling? You roll that though, right? Yeah. And hopefully it just does it on. So everybody gets 14. Everyone gets 14. Copy that. I focus on my. If you need it. Rod DM and get one of my. Spell slots. Spell yeah. So um, while. Okay. While we're doing this is i know it's like a level of hell but isn't it still considered part of like the world ish that's like a, what do you a mean? leading a leading question can, that is leading to I, what can, I, I can i can i commune with nature yeah it's got natural life right <laughs> um, what does the druid dirt? say interesting um could the you wasp? Well, that's why it I depends. was wondering about beast sense if I could see through the wasp, but we established those are fiends, not beasts. Yeah. So. Um, why don't right. so um beans? Could you read or post the text for commune with nature? Uh, yeah, it's a lot reads. to read. Yeah. So let me let me post the text. Yes. You can do that like yeah, uh, medicinal subtext reading, right? Uh, basically, I gain knowledge of the surrounding territory. Um, of the, I get knowledge of the land within three miles. Uh, if oh, if I'm underground, it's limited to three hundred feet. Uh, yeah. Um, three facts. Do, do, do animals. And yes, the uh, but yeah, because I wanted to, I wanted to do beast sense through the wasps, but. <laughs> are the wasps see, fiends or are they aberrations? Have... Peter said they're, they're fiends. fiends. Are they fiends? Okay. Yeah, he's, he said and fiends I when have, I asked about it. I do have spells that are useful against friggin' fiends, but I was so like, does it say, I'm gonna burn it with fire. Does it say, what What does it say about gaining knowledge about, um... I can determine, can, okay. Uh, yeah, so determining, uh, I can learn about the land, what's there, minerals, animals, people, powerful celestials, phase fiends, elementals, undeads, Influence from other planes of existence. I can determine, for example, I can determine the location of powerful undead in the area or the location of major sources of safe drinking ah, water. Okay. Et cetera, so et cetera, et cetera. this I think is totally normal. It does specifically call out the fiends in that description as you can detect their influence. And while this is not nature, while fiendish, uh, fiendish energy is everywhere, it's not nature of the prime material plane, but there is a natural order to the beings of hell in a way. And so I will say that reaching out your the the sense if you choose to well do you choose to use this I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean first. it's it's an at will it's an at will spell, so okay. it's part oh, of cool. my bugbearishness. Yeah. yeah. So um, not the nature you're familiar with, but you 
as you kind of commune with the evil nature of this place, you get the sense of a lot of movement in the bottom, or really in the middle portion of the hive, the bottom just a little bit as well. Many smaller organisms sort of shifting around. And in the top, you feel a concentration of power. Um, you would feel that uh, the most powerful um, entity is likely in the top of the hive. Okay. And do I get a sense of where that location is? Um, just, I think it's pretty, what, what is the level of the spell? It's a level five spell. Oh boy. Um, so you could have, uh, so yeah, uh, the top center of the hive is clearly where the most powerful source of fiendish magic is emanating from. You find a, you feel the heart of activity is in the middle and then much a uh, more beings and lesser beings are sort of scattered about the lower levels. Okay. I convey this to the party. Um, yeah. And do I see any beasts anywhere that I might be able to, I don't know, influence? Maybe? Not right now. You okay. think you maybe see some bones woven into the um, husk of this hive, sort of, but um, definitely no beasts that are living. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, and below it is a giant pool of lava. So. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, awesome. Fun. Cool, cool. I love that for us. Oh, just that um, little thing that I forgot to mention. <laughs> it's okay, guys. I now got the sense of where we need to go. It's fine. There's the giant thing. And once we kill the giant thing, then all the little things will go bye-bye. <laughs> that, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I really can, like can your just, boots, by the way. <laughs> nice nice use just, of them in that last fight. Can we just Thank kill you. it from here? Can we just blow the whole thing up? I, I can stop. Uh, well, yes, yeah. I think we can. Well, if we, but, so if we were to blow it up, wouldn't it destroy the heart? I know it's really gross. Sense. I think we have to go up in there. I think we have to go inside. Do these chains look scalable, Peter? Yeah, that was my next question. Um, potentially. Yeah. I can fly. Maro, you can jump on my back if you like. Oh, that's, that's very nice of you. I appreciate that so much. Um, we're leaving, uh, right? <laughs> no, we're yeah. like totally going in. Uh, Holly, if you would just like fly underneath us in case one of us falls, that would be like amazing. H who did you say that to? Do you call Hallie. her Holly? Yeah, Calmera. <laughs> hello. Holly. Uh, Hey. <laughs> she didn't even register as you said that to her. She's like, she she she, she like, just comes Hallie? over and like pokes you in the arm. Honey, you, I met you. Oh yes, with the uh, back. I mean, what you want me to carry you? What? No, you don't have to carry me. I can totally climb. But like, you know, just in case we fall. Oh, okay. Yes, I will grab you with my very long arms and my pole. I love it. Um, are we? Are we are we ascending? Is this the is this the plan? Are we going in? Carolus turns into a genie. I love it. And adds Marrow to his back. Well, it gets down so he can climb on board. It's just a torso wow. with wind beneath him. All right. Uh, so, Vosheref, Vos Vosheref, and and I assume are going to climb with. Uh, yes. Hallie underneath us, just in case. Yeah, with Hallie underneath us. I just think of the parent okay. trap. <laughs> Hallie. Um, <laughs> uh, what is what your kind strength of... as a genie, Carolus? 
Uh, it's just my normal strength, so eight. I'm just, I'm just small. What do you mean? It's yeah, strength, right? but that's like, you know, oh, no. small. Uh, my strength is small. <laughs> why don't you just, right. why don't you just ask me how much I weigh? So next are you all guys? Are you, are you all going up at once, folks? Did, did, um, Juniper and. Vosharath want to like scout forward? Was that the plan? Because, okay, so the other question that I have then is how much <laughs> sorry, <laughs> the question I have is like how much weight can these, I mean they look friggin enormous don't they? Like it's not gonna be They a are very very strong. Yeah, like were we looking. all to go up together, it's not like we're gonna like we should be fine. under our weight. Yeah. yeah. Never split the party. Don't split the, party. Split the party. No. Okay. So Carlos is folks. flying up, hold, uh, hoisting marrow, and a few of you are climbing. What have you so eaten, require... Do we need to make checks or anything? You're just gonna yes, you do, definitely. I need an Wait. athletics check from Carolus to carry <laughs> oh. marrow all the way up. I was like, oh, Peter is being so nice. And, and while you are checks. climbing at the same time, I need, uh, what kind of checks are we doing here? Uh, acro? Um, dare say acro. It's strength, uh, athletics. It is, um, you can try to sort of climb by balancing tight roping all the way up with an acrobatics, or you can, you know, monkey bars up with um, athletics. It is up to you. All right. As like as a party or as personal people. Per, it's a personal choice. Yeah. It's, a, it's a personal gonna, people choice. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to guide uh, myself and uh, uh, Valsharef uh, as we climb. It does not matter. Okay, you so can I only get... guide one person at a time unless you have a feature that allows you to do both. All right. It's well, I'll let her go. Spell and, I'll let her go yeah. first, and then I will follow her when she's oh. up a ways. If that's so all right. Yep. D four. That's correct. Guidons, as French would say. Guidons. I don't think that's what they say. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh, don't oh no! I got a seventeen. <laughs> um, and then I can roll the D four, correct? <laughs> what happened? Yep. I was rolling. I dice. rolled a one, which uh, puts with my guidance, uh, self guidance. I have a six. Oh, beans. Careless. Well, I rolled. Sorry, go ahead. Tell him what happens. I'm going Carlos, please to... roll an athletics check. I'm going to encourage myself by casting guidance on myself. And I'm going to use my inspiration. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to okay. encourage him I to hold on to me by grabbing around his neck. <laughs> with a one on the d4. So 17, d20, one d4. 11. We're, do oh God, d4. We're all doing athletics, right? I think it was um, a personal. You can preference. do acrobatics if you want to. Ooh, oh no, I, I definitely want to do, do nineteen. Oh, you can you can just fly up. If they... Oh yeah, I've got my boots on. <laughs> God damn it! I got Looking you. Inventory. I got you. Thank I'm you. Helping. Thank you. There was a reason I took that uncommon item. Uh, that and you're also going to have to catch me because I rolled a one on my acrobatics check. Cool, cool, so I, cool. I got you. I'll, 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 I'll fly down and get you. I'll fly down and get you. That was eerily oh, specific and 19. turned out eerily well for you, Juniper. Total. Um, 19 total? Okay. Yeah. And, and Juniper, I'm monkey bars in it. Juniper rolled a one on her acrobatics with her guidance and her bonus. It's a total of six. All right. Um, 15 for me. You... <laughs> um... 15. Okay. That will be enough. Amazingly. Uh, well done <laughs> with the uh, with the inspiration and a four. Gets you just to what you need. Um, Juniper, you plummet. Yeah, heading straight coming. towards the lava. I believe Burp, you guys... Um, <laughs> did you actually have Homera beneath you, or was she picking that up was the plan? Is that she was that underneath? Was the plan. Yeah, and she said yes. That's what Mally I heard said too. Yes. Just double checking. Um, so Homera, you will need to um, be a tough one, but you also need to make an athletics check to try to catch. Let him die. 
if if you want, or you could just you know see what the lava does. Oh, there's lava. Oh yeah, there's lava underneath <laughs> that the juniper is plumbing to. So Halmera, you can catch with an athletics check. Yeah, that, okay. the lava was a fun that. little you could use the detail. Lava, Peter you threw in at the end. <laughs> if you don't yeah. have a backup plan. If you don't have you a backup said plan. athletics. Athletics is going to be a uh, dirty 20. Okay, 20 will do. As you wrap your massive arms around Juniper as she plummets, <laughs> you dip down and you just feel a bit of singeing underneath your feet as you quickly regain the strength of your boots and sort of start cresting up again towards the hive, um, avoiding what fate would have befallen you had you actually fallen in lava. Um, with that, you all will be able to ascend up to the bottom level where there is a hole in the side of the hive. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to... I, I'm just going to drop something into the lava. Is is it is it in fact hot lava? Is it like a coin? Like bloop. As opposed to the icy lava. <laughs> yeah, astronaut posed As, a very what, what interesting happens? question. Um, when I drop the coin into the lava, is it? It's like the One Ring in Mount Doom. It just melts and burns away. <laughs> The sound all right, I'm, I'm gonna. So we're all we're all now in in the thing. Yes. We're up there. Yes. I, I stop everybody. Everybody, um, hold on a second. Um, I think we might be in hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's real lava. It's hot. And uh, well, uh, Juniper is... just looks at you, and she puts her hands on your cheeks, and she just gives you the biggest smile, and then pats you on the head, <laughs> walks yeah, past this... you. It's totally out of character for uh, Boshareth, but like when she hears this, she turns and she looks very incredulously at Mero, unbelieving that someone could be that dull. <laughs> they didn't get it. And she just is like, yes, oh, she's excellent close, observation, close and walks off. <laughs> uh, so these, these guys are far too accepting of this. Hmm. Entering here, this strange floor that's been constructed is a mixture of sort of thin material glued together by ica, ichor and wasp saliva. You actually see bits of torsos, legs, other limbs jutting out from the sides of the walls. You can hear the sound of metallic wings slicing through the air around and above you mostly above you. The walls are, or the ceilings are 30 to 40 feet high. <clears throat> this is what you can see at the moment. I am still technically classed as flying. Okay. Is it In sticky? Like, is it hard to, is it hard to walk around and on? I am also, fl I, I am also is flying. It is technically difficult terrain if you are walking on the ground, yes. Oh, okay. beans. Um. Hold, hold on, guys. Let me let me scoot ahead and, and see what I can see what I can find out. Uh, Kim, she will would like put her hand. No, she'll still. put her hand her hand on your shoulder and say, "Be careful," and uh, guide you as you stealth forward. Okay. Me, do you have dark vision as a halfling? Me, 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 me. <laughs> what? Do you have dark yeah, vision. Said... Sure, I okay. no, do. Don't I? I don't think so. No. Halflings have dark vision, <laughs> right? No. I swear no. they have dark vision. No. Thirty as fuck. I thought so I'm on, too. I'm on racial but... traits I and I don't see it. Or they had dark no. vision. Okay, maybe I'm insane. Yeah. I'm naturally stealthy, though. It is very dark in here. <sighs> um, All the better to hide me. Harder to see, but as there are um, multiple entryways, it's this level is illuminated in dim light. Uh, please roll that stealth check. Since you are, I can see poking the stealth. 
23. Okay. Um, moving forward, you see the chambers kind of expanding this way. You don't see any hell wasps, but you hear, all of you can hear the buzzing coming from above you. So you move and across, can I you can perceive anything, rest. any directions, anything else? Sure, make a perception check. Also, Skill for what it's worth, um, I would like to cast, I'm so sorry, you weren't done. Please go ahead. Um, I just want to use the cantrip light, so I will illumine um, one of, I have a mace. Um, I'll illumine my cha- my chain mail, actually, my, my something, my mail. Um, so it gives off 20 feet of radiant light as okay. we move I lost about. my token. Where did my token go? Yeah, it's <laughs> a new map right to put again. it back on. Yeah. I know, but I don't see it at all. Oh, I have to drag it back over? Right, yeah, onto the map. Aha, uh-huh. aha, uh-huh. there we go. So oh, okay. standing I, I don't have control over it. Oh no, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Never mind. Uh, I got it. I got good. it. Good. <laughs> so as you move over there, um, you then see suddenly a bright light sort of emanate from where you came from as uh, Vosharet is suddenly illuminated. I believe you can see now around. You don't see any actual hell wasps here, but you can see one just kind of poke its head down and look around about from a hole about 30 feet up from this location. You can look straight up about 40 feet and see there's a hole to the next level. Same thing with this hole right here. There's another hole directly above right here. You can hear the buzzing, the metallic slicing of those hell wasp wings up above you. Also, um, I get to choose the color of the light and it's a light icy blue. So it's Ooh. not Ooh. as aggressively just bright white. It's kind nice. of a blue. Yeah. Does, do they blue. look like the, oh, I'm sorry. Do they look like the only points of entry into this level? So as um, uh, uh, Meryl will report that he sees an entryway all the way over there and one across here. But other than that, yes, it looks to be the only entry points into this level that you see. Now, um, who is, and through this conversation and everything, is everyone trying to be quiet? Yes. Yes. Are you stomping Very around? Are you no. yelling? Super stealthy. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, trying then to be stealthy. We will need a stealth check from everyone then as you try to quietly move into this area. 18. I'm just gliding along here. Do I need to? 21, but I am also not on the sticky ground. Is it just stealth as normal? Um. So you see, stealth is not just about it's where true. you it's walk. It's about, about your walking. breathing and your smell. Yeah. I see. Uh, it's good, good stealth rolls, everyone. Beans. Yeah. So Good I had so to far. roll with disadvantage because I wear the male. And so my first one was a 16, but the second one was a six. All right. So Vosharev is not check. being super quiet. Uh, it is a group check. Um, and so, yeah, even the flyers will need to roll. So um, Halmera, please make a stealth check for the group stealth check as well. So a second one? I already rolled one. Oh, sorry. I, well, I didn't hear the number. Um, yeah, I rolled a 21. Oh, great. Almera is just gliding silently um, and stylishly. Uh, uh, <laughs> so... is really jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like this. My arms folded, just floated along like a genie. Yeah. I love it. It's cool. Then so, uh, yes, you, you don't seem to disturb anything too much up. Uh, with that excellence perception check as well, Mero. Um, you hear a voice like uh, it's it, it stands out because it's different from any other sounds in here. The sort of buzzing of the wasps, the creaking and sort of um, I guess slurping, sloshing notion of these sort of um, 
decomposing bodies around here. So you um, do hear a soft whispering voice over in this direction. Um, looking at that area, it seems to there seems to be an area of the wall that's not as solid as the rest. That's sort of smaller bits of chitin and um, devilish amber that's been more hastily constructed into like a little wall. Hmm. Um, I'll wave everybody and first do my impression of a wasp, I don't know, wings and a stinger on my butt and point to the two holes where they were poking their heads through and uh, then point at this not good wall and start just kind of chipping away, seeing if I can see how thick it is. Like, is it paper thin and I can just bust right through it? Or would this take some greater activity? Yeah, so um, getting through this section of the wall, um, it seems like it's almost like like a um, like thick parchment or whatever. You think with your group's help, it would take a little bit of time, but you could potentially carve through the wall and find what's in here um, with with just some working. It might take you a minute or two, but yes, you could get through. Can I, can I listen very carefully at this to see if I can s- determine if there's any movement or sound or buzzing on the other side? Um... Yeah, so make another perception check then. I do one as well, Peter. Yep, as you are all called over to this same area. 28. Oof. All right. That's yours. Um, you hear this uh, sound of sort of whispering. Soon. Soon, my friend. Be there soon. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Very soon. Can't wait to see you all again. Mm. We'll find you something good to eat. Promise that. Yeah. Very soon. I'll, I'll, I'll share with everybody that I hear something on the other side and... Uh show everyone that we should probably try to get through it somehow. Uh, Can I sense that the heartbeat is strong near this particular spot, Peter? Oh, what was your perception check? That you Mine on? was 17. Um, not particularly, no. Okay. You get um, the sense, along with the others, that up is still a direction for the heart. It, uh, like Juniper is making quiet gestures, but is it the consensus that everybody wants to kind of open what's behind this uh, this wall? I would think so. Um, I do want to uh, utilize one of my cool traits, which is mind link, baby. <laughs> so I want to um, mind link, I think with even though Mero does not seem the most quick, the quickest on the uptake. <laughs> you are uh, charging ahead bravely. So I, oh, you're muted. Uh, there's a, Classic I'm not, Mero. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not stupid, I'm in denial. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. Um, sounds good. So I will use Mind Link with Mero. And so what I imagine happening is that <laughs> Vosharath projects her um, projects her voice into Mero's head. So it appears that you're leading this expedition at this point. Oh hello, it's it's, it's Vosharath. I'm sorry. I don't I don't I don't mean to be leading anything. I just I just wanna I hear I'm hearing like a, a person's voice and that's very out of place here, I think. It's it's a person's voice? Are you, are you sure it's a person? Not a buzzing. Uh, right. Um, which language is it? 
I'm, I'm quite DM. adept at languages. Common? Um, Language that I heard was common? Yes, it was. Cool. I know like 17 languages, though. And there are also, do you, there are also some phrases that um, sound like dwarven to you, mixed in with the common. Dwarven is a language that I don't know. <laughs> it's not one of the 17. Oh, damn it. I took goblin and orc. Man. Uh, I'm just, yeah, I'm just I took gonna, like a linguist just trait. Give me, give me a second here. Give me a second here. I'm going to back up and oh, run at the thing oh. and just try to crash through it. Yeah, I wait, have. Wait, 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 wait. I had a no, plan. No, my God. <laughs> no. All right, you, you stop it, me? Like, Do you just... grab my collar? I, I, will, I will. Yes, I will stop you. <laughs> Holy cannoli. <laughs> <laughs> she will just put a hand on your chest, like, calm. Uh, and she will take her decanter of endless water and pour it kind of in cracks in the uh, in the wall. And she'll use shape water to freeze it Ooh, and then to pull the cracks out to weaken the wall. I thought you were just going to dump water on marrow. <laughs> no. With, <laughs> again, with a few minutes of effort, you guys will be able to disassemble this wall if you would like. Um, yes. Leave okay, it. so quietly, <laughs> as you finally kind of tear it apart, taking the long time to do so, um, you see beyond this place um, some what look to be recently dead corpses of some humanoids, very recently, and then sort of staggering around, sort of walking in a circle, you see a figure of a um, just blowing it up for visual purposes of a dwarf wielding a staff that's kind of shining a, um, well, faint light emanating from it. And he looks up. Hello, <gasps> <gasps> well, hello. You. Well, I, my name is Marco Boat Prospero Longshell. You'll wake them. They're You'll dead. wake them. I look up. Uh, yeah. Really, really dead. You're dead. Oh, yes. Don't Who's worry. dead? Not alive. Uh, all of them. I think he means the wasps. Uh, what? The wasps. No, what? The wasps are not wasps. all dead. <laughs> I'm trying they to communicate this to Mero telepathically. <laughs> wasps. They were my friends. <gasps> uh, they were. Yes, they tried to kill us very badly. Look at you all, so big, so big. Not all of us. Big enough. (laughs) Fair enough. You. Ah. Why have you come here? All of the treasure, yes? Because you've come for the shiny, the powerful things, is that why? Is that why you're here? Um, no. But that's cool to know that they're there. Um, how did you even yeah. get here? Yeah, is that why you're here? Taken by... By them? Yes. By the wasps. Mm. One brick and you lock up. Frozen. Oh, Frozen yeah. like the ice flows all the way up north. Yes, and they brought us here as food for the lovelies. <laughs> but you're alive, so that's great. Uh, um, mm-hmm. you should probably like go. Oh my god! And he kind of uh, backs up slowly and kind of leans, and he's now leaning against a wall, and there is this swollen body of a celestial that you can see there that is clearly dead and there's sort of this strange movement coming from oh, inside no. the body along various places and he just okay. kind of leans back against it and leans his head against the shoulder. So maybe not there. Ooh. What is it? What are you looking for? For... for... The, the heart of Raskinides. Heart? Yes. Dun, 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 that is dun, the sound dun, a heart dun. makes, yes. 
I can take you to it. Oh, you can just tell us where it is. And we <laughs> oh, go that's ourselves. great. Yes. Okay. <laughs> DM, can I please do an insight check on this guy? <laughs> but he seems so trustworthy. <laughs> Sure. So suspicious. Or don't be suspicious. Don't, don't be suspicious. Be suspicious don't, be suspicious. don't be suspicious. An 18. 18. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, something's off about what? him and especially <laughs> when Say. he starts to offer uh-uh. to um, take you um, to the heart. So, okay, thank you. No. Uh, but I think it would be in your best interest if you just kind of skedaddled on out of here, because it's really not safe for you. Oh. How long have you been here? Hey. I I'm here with my with my pretties. And he kind of um oh God. starts Gollum. to caress Gollum. the um, the belly of this celestial that's been Stop this celestial corpse that's been baked into the wall, and he starts to rub his hand across it, and you can see then various forms that seem to be inside the body, kind of shifting, moving about. Oh, that, that... And then he starts whispering some of those same phrases to the body. It's all right, we eat soon, we eat soon. <gasps> you know, uh, you know I, ju- I just realized that um, <laughs> this is the wrong room. <laughs> We we're supposed to be a floor up. This is not our room at all. We and I just kill be... him. I feel like maybe just rip the arms off. It will be fine. Yes. Uh, uh. Wait. I agree. Yeah. Oh, Ruby's he up. holds up a hand. Go, Are you attacking go. him? Halmara is just like standing over. She just she's like standing over him like. Okay, so I understand where you're going with this, but wait. Okay. He starts to, um, He's about to kill us. He starts to look around. <laughs> you will not hurt my brothers and sisters. No, and no, no. We're, we're just going upstairs. Um, we're just going upstairs. Uh, who are your brothers and sisters? Do they live inside that corpse? Do they live in your head? They're oh very hungry. No, they're very, the very hungry. Very, very hungry. Yes, yes for us. <laughs> and, you uh, know what they should really eat is these wasps. I hear they're very tasty. I think your brothers and sisters would very much like these wasps. There's lots of them. Yes. Yes. Mara, the call was coming from inside the wasp. Wait, no. <laughs> um, He seems to be pretty diluted here. Um, uh, and so I'm trying to feed him wasps. <laughs> <laughs> they will become them. No, they will not eat their aunts and uncles and friends and cousins. No, 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 they must hatch and Oh, eat. so he okay. makes the wasps. Mm. Yeah, the- he's baking oh, wasps in those yeah. bodies. Yeah, Hallie, oh, remember when God. I said don't do that? I take it back. Just, you know. Now can, can I, I rip the arms now, off? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a good <laughs> idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're attacking, yes. Just gonna Straight go up upstairs. attacking. All right, then we'll roll yes. initiative again. Oh. Roll initiative. <laughs> As he I mean, cries he just out said in he's, terror. He just said he's oh. turning these creatures into into flipping wasps, murder hornets. Right? Yeah, yeah I don't children. care about these creatures. They're dead. He says. They're dead. I don't care. Yes, we killed them uh, all. No. I'm so glad it wasn't How me. dare you kill his children? I think we need everybody in the room, though. Dirty 20 or, for my initiative roll. Uh, I also dirty I didn't 20 hear, for me. Hell yeah. I didn't hear Carolus go in the room, but... Uh, Is this the guy up here? That's who we're talking about? I, I would have been about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I mean, I, you guys were, like, closer talking, and then I walked up to rip his arms off, so, yeah. Yes. <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Never, never piss off a Wookiee. <laughs> So true. Let the monkey uh, win. Uh, what do we got for decks? Okay. Uh, I miss my dex is plus three. Okay. Is there so what, uh, what was the what was the initiative score again? Uh, I was a dirty twenty, but she was also a dirty twenty. Okay. But my dex is only plus one. Oh, okay. Then all right. 
So it is you. Okay. Um, I don't see. I will add. That works. And wow, you guys are fast this time. Roll the crit and on my initiative. Critic Thunderbane. All right. It is then your turn to begin. Okay. So rather than attack him right away, I know this is probably going to upset him, uh, but I'm going to try to destroy the larva before they can explode and attack us. So I am going to cast Frostbite on the uh, moving body. Uh, the moving celestial body to destroy the larva with cold from the inside. Harsh. Okay. Yes. So. Sorry, the where larva... is this lava body? Where is it? It's the larva. It's the larva right body behind is right behind. Him. behind. Yeah. Is that body right there? Okay. It is that body. Gotcha. Um, oh dear. So is that a um? That's a single target spell? Yes. All right. It will automatically fail the con save as they're trapped, but um, most of them seem pretty frozen, but they all start to spill out and start to squirm <laughs> around as the body just splits open in oh many God. places. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How does the cold split the body open? I call shenanigans. It damages it. It freezes and then, and then, um, you see the body was already open. bloated. It also does deal an immense amount of damage to them all. So that makes a big, it makes a big difference. And they're not, uh, so, um, I say no shenanigans. Um, Man, you spilled the beans. Beans. DM's rule. Find the number here. But are there straw nanigans? Always straw nanigans. <laughs> um, excuse me, we will have then. Um, I forgot how many wrote down. Zero? I'm pretty sure it's zero. Yeah, uh, it was. It was. Um, it was actually negative one. It was. <laughs> it was a modifier on that roll. Larva's all dead. Yeah. Negative one. Really? All right, two grubs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for rolling so, uh, that publicly, Peter. Oh god. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you. There you go. Uh, that's the answer to that. All right. Anything else on your turn? Uh, no. Uh, no. I think that that's that's enough. <clears throat> I've done enough. Okay. Uh, we'll be right back to, um, when it's, uh, Vosharef. I believe it is actually Halmera, because she's got the higher Oh, I, I did it the I've wrong order. The Halmera, yeah. okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. You have this uh, so, thing in range. Yes. yes, so I'm going to bonus action rage. Uh, uh -huh. I'm going to attack recklessly with, a great weapon master. Uh, that is going to high. I rolled two 18s, so that's going to be uh, 24 to hit. Um, yeah. Okay, <laughs> you this, got we're me. Screwed. Kinda, <laughs> you scared me there. I was like, damn. Uh, 28 points of damage. Ouch. Uh, I'm going to roll again without Great Weapon Master, which is, uh, this is not going to hit. A 13. Does not hit. Yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, cool, 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 cool. Uh, so those are my two attacks. And I already used my bonus action. So I am then going to move back to, what is this, 5, 10, 15, 20 feet. Oh, yep, yep. So I'm moving back 20 feet. And we're still in <sighs> difficult terrain if we're not flying, is that correct? Uh, yes, yeah, so I am levitating. Uh, I just want to make sure the rest of us are moving correctly. Okay. It's difficult, man. Yep. And um, how high is the, how high is the, the, the ceiling? 30 feet, I think you said. Uh, yeah, 30 feet. Okay. And it will, um, at the end of your turn, he will look frenzied and he'll, you hurt my children. 
and will cast yes. four Eldritch Blasts at you, Juniper. That's fine. That's fine. Um, I have a 21 to hit. I have a 19 to hit. Uh, below 15 to hit. And then I have a 20 to hit. Uh, that is three hits. All right. Uh... I am immune to Eldritch Blast, though, so... Oh, isn't no, that... No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> oh, oh, you had I, me. You rat. I was, I was pulling a Jade. This is going to be a lot. I have uh, a feeling this is going to be a lot. Uh, 27 points of damage. Okay. All right. Uh, this is why I shouldn't move out of range. Now I understand. And now okay. it is... I'm Vosharis. totally reading Sentinel. Okay, so uh, I will cast the Ken Trip Toll the Dead at this okay. guy. It's a range of 60 feet, so I'll just stay where I am. I've rolled a natural 16. Well, for... beans, but that just means. Uh... Wisdom save? I've got 20. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, then I guess it means nothing. Um, okay. Peter is all like, you may have killed my wasps, but I'll get you now. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Jeez. So it doesn't matter anyway, but because uh, you passed. You passed your wisdom save. And so um, with my bonus action, I will cast um, a new one for me. Again, another exciting new thing. I'll cast, I just had it in front of me. I think it's Holy Weapon is what I'm going to cast. Yes. Holy uh, Weapon. Cool. And so I imbue my mace with Holy Power. That's my bonus action. I just stay put. At the end of your turn, he begins to cast a spell. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He just cast a spell on me. Yeah, he's casting another one. Unacceptable. He he used Eldritch Invocations. Their action, probably. Yeah. And um, we'll do the, another set of attacks. I have a 221, I have a 14, and then a 19. On um, Juniper. Oh, yeah. He's uh, real it, mad. That's, uh, the, uh, my armor class is 19, so how many did you say? Gotcha. 221, Three, 19? Yeah. Yep. Yep, so then he's, three hit. Sorry, Juniper, he's from a red this. state. Ooh, 35 points of damage. Oh. Getting hurt pretty bad. Now it's his turn, and he will look at you and cast another spell. Juniper. Yeah. Please make an intelligence save. Oh, okay. Can do it. Prove that you're oh. not a bubblehead. Yeah. That's a 21. Oh. All right. You are not feeble minded. Oh, jeez. Good. And Wait, was the that the spell, or are you just generally saying that? <laughs> no, but uh, you saved from feeble minded. Mons are not dumb. That's just a stupid stereo system. Um, cool. All right, uh, do, do, do. that is um, its turn over. Carolus, you hear a buzzing sound coming from above you, as you can start to see now, four hell wasp heads poke out, looking down in your general direction as the chaos of battle has now drawn them down from the upper level. Damn. Um. That's changed what I was gonna do. I can I see they're pull... forty feet up, but they're here and here, and they're large. As a movement, can I pull uh, Liz's character with me? Um, it would. I can. I usually say yes, but you're at half movement, and you're already I'm well. Flying. But you're flying, so yeah, at half movement. Okay, I. So I could I could move uh, to here then, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I moved there as well, and I cast 
So it's like so the tip is on hitting me and like obviously so it's not hitting me and Liz. I cast sickening radiance. Which is like behind foot. us, right? Behind you us, cast yeah. it behind us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's into this room. <laughs> um f thirty foot radius. A dim yeah. greenish light. Uh let me cast it. So con save DC nineteen. Okay. That's a, as things enter. Or begin or, their or turn. They, or they begin their turn there. Um so it's is it a cone? Sorry, what's the It's uh uh uh, uh it's it's a thirty foot radius sphere. Sphere cool. nice. So it catches them. Yeah, it should. Just centered on the point you choose. Yeah. 30 foot. Let me pull out the. Basically, a, it, it would cover the entire chamber. Yeah. Damn. Oh, so. Yep, that'll do it. So I want the edge. So nice. the edge of the spell to be here. Yeah, there, that's it. Cool. Am I right size alias? Uh, 30 feet, right? Yep. yep. 30 feet. Yep. Cool. All right. Very good. Con saves. Oops. Rolled them publicly. No, I didn't. Um, I have one save. It's, the rest it's, when they, it's on their turn, isn't it? it or oh, when oh, they start yeah. there. All right. Uh, Creature so, moves into spells area for the first time okay. on a turn so or on starts their turn, its it turn start. there. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, it's a anything really else good from Carolus? Yeah, that's great. That's me done. And I've obviously moved Liz's character. So I can't move anymore, correct? Uh, correct. Okay, and that's, that's probably me done then. End of your turn. You killed my friends, or you're trying to kill my grubs, so I'm going to make another four attacks against Juniper. Dude! I have a natural 20. I, I have count a... Count a spell if I can. Can I count a spell? It's, can you count it's an a spell? Invocation. Can it's not really a spell. Yeah. No, you can. It's it's. He's casting Eldritch Blast, so you can come so, spell it. So, question real quick. I just want to verify that the 20 points of damage that you hit me with, that was 20 points of damage before the Feeble Mind facet of it failed, correct? Yes. Okay. It was at the uh, end so of the turn, then on his turn he tried to cast Feeble Mind and was uh, and it failed. So I, but I still take those 20 points of damage. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it was, and it was uh, 35, by the way. It's uh, adding 15 because there were three hits. Um, it, my rolling, no, 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 I don't no. have a way to roll. Oh, that was the, oh, I see. So that those, the 5, the 10, the 5, those were the three Eldritch Blasts that hit. Yes. I see. Okay, then I'll take those back. Think Same as the uh, three that hit you before. Yeah, yeah, for I got total those. Of 27 and Z was just saying that the 46 psychic damage uh, prior to the intelligence save would happen for the feeble mind, and I, you didn't roll that on me. Oh, okay. That's a good point. That would go off. So there's an extra um, six points of damage, I believe. Um, six. Nope. Okay. You uh, do I take all of it? No, you take all of it. Twelve points of damage. Okay, I'm gonna go down soon, guys. All right, and then you said three more. Uh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Bye. Um. Nope. But not before that was counterspelled. So now we go to Carolus. Not excuse me, uh, Meryl. Okay. Well. I am going to take five, ten. I am within range. Um, using rakish audacity, I am within five feet, and no other creature is within five feet. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you say there's already things being attracted? That there's already things coming down on us? Yeah. Yes. And you hear the body corpse four large on the floor. Wasps. There's still something moving in the body There's corpse. There's two little, almost dead-looking little grubbies on the ground, yes. Okay, then I'm going to use Isex Shared Sips. Uh, so I'm going to make a melee attack, but when I do, there's going to be some splatter. 
Uh, so I'm going to make an attack. Uh, that is a 27 to hit the strange dwarfin thing. Yes. <clears throat> that hits. That is a total of 26 damage magic Oof. to him. I'm sorry, 36 to him. Okay. As scalding hot water erupts from him and then splashes out six points to the corpse that is within five feet of him. So the two little creatures pick one. Um, gotcha. So one of them <laughs> evaporates into this flame or whatever, completely dead. And <gasps> he looks at you and goes, ah! oh. and his eyes and his mouth become wreathed in this flame as he and this Ooh. rebuke hurts and casts a enormous amount of fire over you. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Dexterity saving throw is, do I get it? Is that, that well, that's just a saving throw, isn't it? Yeah, so 17. What is Mr. Guy's DC? <clears throat> um, Let's see. Uh, oh, 17 just saves. Oof. You don't take any damage, do you? I, I don't know, do I? Well, you're <laughs> a rogue. Yes, Imagine. I do not. I do not take any damage. And so it's difficult terrain, but I, that was, uh, so it was 10, 20. I can't, yeah. I don't have enough to actually get away from him because it's difficult terrain. Um, okay. But I can bonus action dash and then get away from him. Okay. But, but so doing does not provoke an opportunity attack because of fancy right. footwork. Cool. And I'm all done. All right, at the end of your turn, it will direct an Eldritch Blast towards... How, how many this turns? Guy turns this every turn, <laughs> wow. I think it's the legendary, actual actual legendary action. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I got another... Na Sorry, Juniper, my first bolt is a natural 20. Uh, Wait, why is it me? He hit her last. I know, but you're looking really weak and you started the thing. So 16 I did start damage. The thing. Okay. Are you still up? I'm still up. All right, another one coming your way. Stop it! Uh, I have a 24. He's mad. Miss. Uh, for seven points. Uh, okay. One he more. hasn't missed He's in a while. Four bolts. Yeah, I know. I'm rolling above 15 every time. 25 to hit. I'm down. Four. Okay. Remember when we felt bad for Peter? Because And his now bad. another <laughs> bolt is going towards Marrow, the killer of the grubs. Um, I only killed one grub. There's my you. dice. Uh, How dare you malign my no. character that way? I only killed 24 one 24 to hit for uh, 12 points of force damage. I am going to do the evasion thing and only take half that, right? Yep. Oh, wow. So turn. It was 14, you said? Yes. So and I have seven. a bunch of poisoned ones and one who is not poissoned. So, <clears throat> they also take exhaustion. Um, it's not poison; really? it's radiant damage. Oh, what is the damage? It is radiant. Oh, so, it's um, actually radiance. Yeah, radiant yes. damage. It is just a awesome spell. Kids at Sorry. home, if you haven't looked up sickening radiance before, I did seventeen radiant damage, um, and obviously they take a level of exhaustion as well. Okay, and they're glowing. And they're glowing. Does it persist then? Yeah. That in that spot. Well, they're in, right inside it, and I've got concentration. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, what a uh, half damage on success. Uh, uh, it's all or nothing. Oh. Ew. Yeah, I think all it's right. all or nothing. Yeah. Cool. Couple exhausted. All right, we're going to see if we can make it all the way in. Everyone here. Uh, yeah, well enough. I'm gonna fly in, fly in, fly in, fly in, and uh, make land between the rogue and the thing. And did the top they one enter? Will make it to did they enter into the barbarians' area? Uh huh. 
Yeah. One of the first one definitely did. So yeah, like the first one oh, cool, would cool. have come into um, probably um, about in this spot here. Yes, I would very much like to attack this one. Uh, that is going to be no bueno. Uh, uh, Fifteen to hit. Will not hit. Will glance off of its armor. Yeah, I didn't think so. And let's make some attacks. Um, Sting versus uh, the rogue. Um, I've got 12 to hit. Sword talons. Gonna be a nine, so that's not good. Barbarian, we've got a sting coming for you. At 15, does that hit? Does not. And talons, 412. Wow, this is fun. Mm. Again, um, the other two... Yes, we know what's going on here. Um, you are they glowing. We're going to attack you. Uh, attack, uh, no. <laughs> Attacking Moshareth. Uh, I've got a 23 to hit. Yes. Sorry, that hits. Oh, <laughs> I nodded, but I realized I was like, he may not see me nodding. <laughs> um, please make a constitution saving throw. You know, nothing would make me happier than do that. So. You need this. You need to pass this. Oh, be. What did I just say? My nose. <laughs> I am about to sneeze. Um, sorry, you guys. Beep, boop, 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 boop. Um, it. Ah, it's uh, six plus two is eight. You feel yourself become paralyzed. What? Then strikes with its sword talons at advantage. Sorry. I have a 15 to hit. Does that miss? No. Yeah, that misses. Unfortunate. You're still paralyzed, though, and poisoned. Um, <laughs> yeah, how sad. How unfortunate. All right. And against uh, Mr. Caster, I have a 10 for the sting and 18 plus uh, something for the so 25 for the sword talons. Yes, that hits. 15 points of piercing damage. Please make the con save. And it is just makes it. I get a voltage, but oh, I did click it. I don't know why I didn't do it. Nice. 15. We're back to Juniper. Fifteen Death normal save. damage, yeah. No. Not yep. fifteen fire or anything like that. Fifteen piercing. piercing. Magical. Um, I couldn't have, I wanted to interrupt, but I didn't. Oh, okay. I take a step closer to death. I rolled a three. Um, uh, I can't, I, I can't use, uh, absorb elephants, uh, absorb elephants, <laughs> absorb <laughs> it's a whole new spell. I can't use absorb elements on, uh, Eldritch Blast. Can I? Someone's what? That's force damage. No, it's force damage. It's not one of the elements. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I rolled a three. That's my turn. What do we do now? We dog. Got one more legendary at the end of your turn. Um, Marrow, murderer, four Eldritch Blasts coming at you. I have a uh, 18, I have a 28. Are, the, and I have are all those at disadvantage? Um, Have you been hit since your last turn? No, I haven't been hit in this wait oh, since good. my last no. It was before right. my turn that I got hit. Or right. was it? Okay. Okay. So then I have a um I have an eighteen at disadvantage. Well wait, he yelled murderer. I attacked and he attacked yelled murderer. You. Eh. That's How fine. many of them um, hit? Here, I'll, all I'm hit. gonna just I, I forgot. I'm gonna re I'm gonna restart the rolls because you do have cloak of displacement, which is very important. So um, starting from disadvantage. All right. Um, I have a uh, double, double checking my two hit bonus. Um, yeah. So uh, 13. I have a uh, I have a 25 hit. natural 19 and 18. So hit. regular rolls for the for the last two. Uh, 12 and another 25. Uh, 12 2d10 and plus 10 25 
Yeah. So total of eighteen damage. Um. I can uncanny dodge one of them to half the attack. Yep. So you could reduce it from um, to one of them to um, six plus. All right, so you could reduce it to 15, basically. Okay, 15 points of damage, done. <sighs> uh, maybe. I, I made it on that math wrong, but um, half we'll of nine is it. four plus nine is 13. 13 damage. Anyway, cool. Uh, on to Vosharef. Okay, uh, me. so... Oh, sorry, is it... Excuse no, me. Yes, uh, yes you're Hallie. right. I, I screwed up the... I thought I fixed the order. Sorry. Back. It's okay. Little guy. Um, so I've got this murder hornet right in front of me, right? Yeah. Okay. So I was like, can I get to her? Um... Would I be able to get to her or no? I, I, he's he's right in the way. Yeah, so this one here is hovering above the heads. The other ones have dropped down to try to um, block and obscure. They are um, tactical beasts. So uh, okay. the one well, on, I... that looks to be behind um, Juniper is the only one that's hovering off the ground five feet. Okay, so I have to go through. So I'm recklessly attacking with great, uh, great master. So, oh, that's nice. Uh, so that's going to be a lot to hit. Uh, uh, Twenty-seven to hit. Oof! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's going to be. Uh, Twenty-two points of damage for my first attack. Yep. Going in for my second attack with great weapon and yeah, all that. Uh, same twenty-five to hit. Oof. Yeah. Wow. That is going to be twenty-two points of damage. Okay. And then I'm going to bonus action pole arm mastery him with that is a uh, twenty-seven to hit. Holy crap. Yes. She and that cooking. is going to be 10 points of damage with my D4. That 10 on that bonus action is enough that with just. Oh, cool, cool, cool. The sickening cool. radiance so... made a difference, but with the strike and the strike and the, the back end, you just break off and you see very similar to what uh, happened at the beginning of the session, this head of a wasp kind of just roll cool. across the floor. So I can't do a second bonus action then, can I? No. Because well, I use my bonus if, action, but then with, with Great Weapon Master, if I reduce a creature to zero hit points, uh, I can make a melee weapon attack as a bonus action, but I already used my bonus action. So. That's correct. Um, okay. Still a good then turn. I'm going to use my movement to go up to here. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Now so we're try, at Well, I, actually, uh, yeah, he's dead. So I want to try and get to where I can kind of protect her. Shoot, sure. How do I do? There we go. Yeah, if you're there, then if either of those two attacked her, you would get reaction attacks. So cool. Yeah. Uh, Vosha Ref, you're up. Okay. So I have a question. <laughs> If uh -huh. I were to channel divinity, could I power something that would get me out of this paralyzed state? If it um, were successful. Oh, you are paralyzed. Unfortunately, um, you have to use your action to do it. What? No, -uh. can I use my brain? <laughs> <laughs> I've got hive mind or whatever. You're yeah. writing the rules of 5e. Direct line to God, baby. In this no, one, unfortunately, okay. no. Frig. Okay, well, <laughs> what are my options, dear DM? I think you just spend your turn paralyzed and you can make another constitution save to try well, to break out of it. how fun. I know. I know. Gosh, I was going to be like, Ileana, help me. And she's going to be like, okay. And then I was going to save everybody. So 12 plus 2 is... 14. 14 is enough to become unparalyzed. <laughs> yes. Praise be to Ilyana. <laughs> All right, so. Oh, am I, am I 
That's it. That's at the end of the turn. Yeah, that should be the end of my turn, right? Yeah. Am I going to die now? Maybe. Um, maybe. It's very possible. Uh, Let's see what he wants to do. Yeah, he's going to um, begin to cast a spell at you. And... Yes, that is indeed what he will do. Um, we'll point a finger at you. Oh. And this necrotic Pronoun, energy leaps. What's a, what's a you? Who, who are you? Who, who Sorry, you? Uh, Mero. You knew it was coming at you, Mero. Um, <laughs> cool. So, <laughs> He's within points. five feet of me, right? It's a spell. Unfor- it's not a... Um, oh, it's only... Yeah, so he's casting a spell. I mean, it just says when a creature within five feet of me makes an attack against a target other than me. Oh, it doesn't say melee attack. It does not. It says I have to make a melee attack. attack, But it just says attack. It's also not as so. So these anything uh, uh, (laughs) making an attack, whether it be a spell attack or a melee attack, usually implies it's a two hit. Ability. So if he were casting a fireball at him or even making scorching ray attacks, if it had make a spell attack against uh, in the wording of the spell, then yes, okay. I would say that. So Faust. this is not this a spell is just attack. simply like a thing that happens and it is not a spell attack. Um, so boo. Um, Ma- I know. Marrow, please make a constitution saving throw. Constitution, man. Lucky, it's it's a nine. Have you used your inspiration yet? So I have not. Got to do should it have, before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably uh, should have. Oh well. Bye. I said I was gonna die. You're lucky though. Aren't you? Um, it's not uh, that it's impressive. Luck. Actually, it has to be a one. Oh. Uh, very average. Well, dead on average. Uh, finger of death spell. Fifty-six points of damage. Oh, I'm down. I couldn't right. count, count as an I... attack. How does that not count as an attack? <laughs> it, uh, yeah, it just caused you searing pain. Um, let's see. That is the end of its turn. All right. Uh, what? Okay. Yeah. What? 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 Nothing. What? Nothing. 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 Can I feed Samus a healing po- a healing potion that I've got? As a I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna ask if you could feed. That's an feed action. juniper to the wasp. <laughs> <laughs> Choices. That is an action. So. Uh... I had other plans. Okay, I... I cast Banishment on him. Okay. Um... And... This one here. Let's Let's see. see. Um. On, so on the wasps or on the guy? One on the wasp and one on the guy. All right, the guy has rolled. Let's see. I gotta find a different dice. Charisma save. Yes, indeed. He's a warlock, isn't he? (laughs) Um. So he has, don't don't say anything yet. Okay, let's roll a 20. He's gonna use Dark One's own luck just to make sure. He's got 28 on the save. He passed. And then the Wasp has a six. The Wasp is gone then. Please specify which Wasp again. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't use my eyes. All right, here we go. The top one that's near Marrow. 
just pops out of existence for a bit. Time being. Anything else, Karyalis? I will... That's an action. I can't do anything else. No bonus actions? Not right now that's going to be doing anything, so... <laughs> Alright. Marrow. Death save, please, I believe. You take one step closer towards life. Hell wasps. Hmm. Let's uh, attack Miss Barbarian and Mr. Caster. So against Romero, the first sting comes in at a 17. That matches. Oh, sorry, Palmera. Palmera, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That matches, but uh, with uh, with resistance. Okay, cool. Uh, you need a con save, which I don't think you can fail. Not really. I try. I say that. <laughs> She's strong. <laughs> Twenty-two. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, Ten points of damage. I did reduce the piercing by half, half already on that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And sword talons are below 17, so they will miss. All right. And then versus Karyalis. Stingy Sting for 18. Hits. Nine piercing, six fire, and a con save. Oh, wait. H where is this character that just attacked me? This big one here. And now you can use it. So, sorry, me. there's nothing. I, someone's, there's nothing there. What? So this character here is what attacked me? There's two wasps. This yeah. Oh, I'm only see I only see one. You guys are clicking on a blank square for me. Oh, oh weird. Really? Oh, there it is. Now I see yeah. it. Okay, cool. Now I will use my reaction to attack that waspy wasp since they are now attacking someone other than me. So I will invoke my sentinel. Sentinel. Uh that is gonna be uh uh, am I able to use great weapon on uh, reactions? Yes? Yes, as long as you decide before you roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I will use great weapon on this. <laughs> uh, so that is going to be a 15 minus 5. is going to be a 10 plus a... Uh, it's going to be 21 to hit. Uh, whew. Yeah. You had a natural 10 and it became up to be a plus 11? Uh, so I had an 18 minus 5 oh, plus okay. 11. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. I heard a 10 yeah. and I got real confused and panicked. Oh, no, that was me That great. was me subtracting. Yeah, uh, so You're that's good. gonna be, sorry, I just rolled damage and I don't want, uh, so, uh, 21 points of damage. Ouch. Ouchies. All right, so uh, that will go off. Did you make the con save, Jade? I haven't yet. Um, is it a magical effect? Um, no. Did it uh, but it is poison. You're immune. I'm immune. <clears throat> so how much cool. damage was it? Sorry. 15 total. Uh, I have a 19. No, sorry. Break it down because I'm resistant against fire. Oh, cool. Uh, nine and six. So 12 total. Oh, okay. And... 19 to hit on the second one. It's for eight points piercing. Eight points piercing. Uh, I don't know what, what did I roll? One save 20. And one save 24. Nice. Very good. All right. That's them. Um, poor Juniper. <laughs> Sorry. What are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to use my inspiration for this death save. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, 
Just kidding, just kidding. That's not that's not my role. I got so excited. I saw the I saw the, nat, the, the crit, and I was so like, mine. oh, okay. It that didn't roll at all, coaster. did it? It was. It was. I was so excited. Okay, I'm just gonna roll twice. I was it's right there with you. Uh, okay, first one is a five. Second one is a one. So it's, it's a good really thing. It's really good I, you rolled with inspiration. <laughs> it is. It is. Somebody oh, bring me the fuck Hold up. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. They did roll a one on a 20. Right? Sorry, what? He, he did, did with roll, advantage, though. He did roll a one, but he did indeed roll a one. Yeah. No, no, but I have to see him. Never mind. Luck. I have to see him. I have to see him and I'm out. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So he's yeah. he's two death saves down then. Yeah. 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 So you will take a step closer to <clears throat> non livingness. Yeah. Almara. I'm going to call you Juniper Artem. God. At, uh, he is at disadvantage to do. Well, no, he's not. He has some melee ones too. So now that he has. I forgot he already had some legendary actions back so he's going to the green by the way okay going to reach out and um cast shocking grasp at you at the end before the start of your turn um the 17 hit is that that's just exactly it again isn't it me on who halmara uh yeah yeah, sorry. I'm still getting used to That's hearing okay. this name. I'm like, what? Uh, yes, that matches. Yeah. 21 points of uh, uh, lightning damage. Okay, have that. Do you resist, resistant to lightning too? Cool. Yeah, 10 then. I am totem spirit bear, so I'm resistant to everything except psychic. Nice. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. All right, 10 damage then. So and it's your turn. 10 damage. And you're fighting bugs. Hey. Okay. Love it. Wait, did you say it's my turn? Yeah. Oh, it's my turn. Okay, great. I am going to pull a greater, what is the, what do I have in my inventory? I have a potion of greater healing in my Ooh. inventory that I am going to pull out and I'm going to give to my dear, dear friend over here because she promised to show me how to make my fur very shiny and she has not done that yet. So I give her the <laughs> potion. Oh. All right. Love it. Okay, so that is, hold on, let me see. What do I need to roll? 44 plus, can I just roll this in here? No, I'm not going to roll to do that. Yep. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll whisper you the secret. It's stem cells. <laughs> wow. Okay. Stem cells. Thanks. While we're waiting, Buddy's just bought a t shirt. <laughs> Yay! The inspiration buddy. for everybody, right? Steve, right. Uh, so that's those sick, uh, guys, so. 16 points of healing for you. Oh, I love that. Uh, I'm going to have... play dead so that they don't attack me. How's that? <laughs> You're just going to lay there. Okay. I'm just going to lay there. Uh, so let's see. Can I do anything else? I believe that's all I can do for my turn because that was my action. And hey. I, I can't um, bonus action polearm, can I, if I didn't action polearm? <laughs> uh. Uh, correct. So, at the end of your turn, you're still oh, melee. Do, He's do, going to do another. What? I, I was thinking fighter action surge. Sorry. Gotcha. No, I don't have. Wait, hold on. I do. I yeah, keep no, rolling. I, don't have, I, don't have I, I, I feels like it feels ridiculous. I rolled another. I rolled three tens in a row, so I have another seventeen for another shocking grasp. Mm -hmm. um, he would be at disadvantage to attack anyone else, so he's going to keep shocking you. So that's yes. a really big shocking grasp. Take, thankfully, it's halved. Take 15 points of um, uh, the damage. You cannot take reactions until the start of your next turn. No, I, my reactions are done. And uh, if he keeps shocking me, it's going to hurt very, very bad. And I just use my only healing potion. So let's kill this bitch. Vosharath. Um. Vosharath. Vosharath. <laughs> and so uh, Vosharath regains her ability to move. And I imagine that when she was paralyzed, was she knocked prone when she was paralyzed or was she standing? Yes, still? you would fall over. Okay, so <laughs> Jade. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a question. Yeah. 
Yep. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> so um, she begins to regain the feeling and movement in her fingers and toes and realize, realizes that the, uh, the paralysis is at its end and she <sighs> is breathing heavily and as she breathes heavily, getting herself to her knees, she whispers... Beep a doop boop boop bop. Um, she whispers, Confervo, and she casts mass cure wounds. So, and she wants to target everybody in the party. Because I think we oh. all need a little extra healing right now. Bird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to cast I mean, it at my sixth just, level spell slot. So that. Wow. I just want you to know that I'm unconscious, so I don't see this, so I don't owe you anything. Fair enough. That's 18 points of healing for everybody. To in the everyone? Party. Yeah. Everyone. <laughs> That's clutch right there. That's yeah. Uh, yeah. Marrow no longer dying. All right. Anything else? Um, and can I take my movement still? Yep. You'll provide. Okay, cool. Let's see. But yeah, I'm just double checking. And difficult to win a boke. Invoke this it. one. This one is hovering ten feet off the ground, so you could okay. or five feet off the ground, so you could walk under it. Uh, but as long as you don't go five feet away from it, you're fine. So okay. you could go like here or here or here even. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'll go on. Yeah, you know what? Screw this guy. I'll go on the other side of the little waspy guy and get all up in uh, dwarf's face. Wow! Look at you. Okay. Real Anything sick else? of his shenanigans. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, what do I do with my last spell slot? Probably Escape. run. No, he's got to defend his family. I've got a nice line here. I've got a nice line for a lightning bolt. Um, so would that would that would also harm his house and the other wasps? And I don't know if he would do that. <laughs> the one wasp is <laughs> hovering up in the air. Yeah, that doesn't seem like um, in character. So uh, I'm sure he would do something like Vosharef shield and <laughs> yeah. Halmera and Juniper and um, how high and off the ground is he? Carlos, please. It's oh, are you up in the air? Mm hmm. All right. It is, um, he is, well, it depends. This will actually affect the decision. So, Carlos, are yes. you in the air or are you just kind of hovering? I'm, I'm hovering off, just off the ground, so. Okay, so, um, then the three of you. Which three are you going? Uh, I will go here, here, and here. There's a five foot wide line. <clears throat> so that is, Vosharef and Juniper and Karolas, please make a dex saving throw. I am not dexterous. 22. <laughs> oh, a six. Natural 20. Plus, oh. like I said, not dexterous, one seven. All right. No, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. It's a nine. Plus one is 10. Okay. Does that make a oh, difference? Sorry, what? sorry, sorry. Uh, is that right? What a terrible... That's okay. So 14 points to those of you who had 20s and such. I'm going to um, absorb elements that. Vosareth, you take 29. <laughs> what? Did you hear me, Peter? Sorry. I'm going to absorb elements that at the third level. It's a quarter. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, not very much. Oh, those are terrible. That hurts. No, you That's halve the end of his turn. It. You halve it. It's fourteen no, no, it, minus the six, so it's still it's still. No, 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 no. The six you add to your next attack. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. have it, you and then that's it. part of your next attack. And then the so it's fourteen. So you take yeah. seven if you cast absorb elements oh. and succeed on the deck save. And then store that energy and release it on your next yeah. attack. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Carolas, you're up. Uh, I don't like these creatures in my face. Um, so you say they're ten foot up, so I can can I shoot? At Five normal? feet up. 
Oh, five feet. Yeah, five foot. You're still in melee range with them. <clears throat> um. Uh, whatever. I'm gonna. I will move five foot back. Okay. I'll take the op attack. I think. Trying to remember how these happened. Yeah, I'd we'll take the op attack. From one or half level, I uh, I've got a 13, so it's fine. Yeah. Just... And uh, the other sting is going to be a 16. Uh, that will hit. Okay. Con save. I don't need to. Never mind. Don't do con save. So uh, 13 points. I have the fire already. So You have the fire. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay, um, and then I will... <coughs> Advantage on con saves is clutch. Yeah. Um... Oh, I'm, gonna... I'm gonna blast the dwarf. I'm gonna have to. Uh, 19 to hit. Hits. 20. Two hits. 21. And the first one, uh, as the first one hits, uh, let's see, he turns towards you and offers his last hellish rebuke. Please make a deck save. 18. Okay. Half of... What was it again? 68, I think. Uh, 68. And half <clears throat> of... So, five points of fire damage. That's really disappointing. It's okay. Sorry you didn't die, dear. <laughs> and then with the last yeah. one... Thank Constitution. <laughs> and with that last blast you see him kind of cowering and he's almost completely dead looking and he looks up and he yells mother mother and then your last eldritch blast just throws him against the wall and the spellcaster slumps dead uh, that's me done then Okay. Carolas. Excuse me, Meryl. Right. So I'm going to step forward. Uh, going to do SX Binding Ties for the extra damage. Okay. Um, so that'll be something if I can hit. And I'm going to go ahead and use Inspiration to hit because this is ridiculous. Yeah. Wow. 14. Sorry. <laughs> Natural three Rolled and four. a three and a four. Oh my <laughs> god. All right. Um, we might need to just use, is there anything else you do? Uh, yes. Going to, uh, probably, I, I've got movement. I'm just going to go, uh, I made a melee attack, so he can't take an op attack. Uh, okay. Five, 10, 15, 20 to right there. Okay. And uh, I could have I could have passed through my allies. It would have only been fifteen feet. Um, That's all good. And then, uh, cunning action and hide <laughs> behind Helmara because I've got a halfling and I can hide behind. That very large bugbarian. Very, awesome. very large seven foot dug uh, bugbear, yes. So, um, I'm very small. We'll see if these attacks hit. We'll have two for Almera, you're a big target, and two for. 
juniper because you look holy and they hate those things. Uh, junipers have got 17 and 16. You, those are an advantage because I'm prone. Okay. Um, so that's the, I'll use that as the first attack. Second attack. Advantage. I have um, 26, 11 that's points of piercing damage. Okay. And versus Halmara, a sting. Ah, this time I miss at a 16. And a miss with 11. Okay. So, not to rob of drama, but um, these are the last of the reinforcements coming down, and the one nearest that is most damaged is about a blow from death, and the other one with a whole cycle of turns and no big bad in between. I have no doubt that you guys will finish them in this next turn. So you Boom. were able to slay through these last hell wasps and you still hear just a bit of movement <laughs> bubbling above in the hive, but everything here in this area now is down, is fallen. Um, the crazed dwarf warlock slumps dead against the wall and it's quiet at least for a moment the thrumming of the heart still echoing from above so i think with that we will leave the rest of this exploration for our next session i'm sorry i made us go in here it's fine <laughs> I, I have an idea maru help me hide this bottle and uh i'll say everyone where, hold my hand where do you want me to hide it somewhere in here Okay. And once he's sort of hit it, I'll I'm gonna drag the, the dwarf dwarf's body over, hold everyone's hand, and then we all zip inside the bottle. Inside the genie's bottle. What's it like? Oh in there? yeah, yeah, yeah. Genie, it's, oh it's like, nice. It's imagine yeah, like you know what it's like inside. I wanted to play a genie since it yeah. came out, yeah. It, it, imagine what it's like inside you know that's the tent flaps that you lift lifted up to walk inside all cushiony yeah. and it's like one of them very exotic yeah. within nice. 10 minutes of being in there you know we'll get a short rest so yeah short rest guys we, um, we will find a couple magic items here that's why i dragged the body there is a cloak of arachnidia on him there is a plus three quarter staff and plus three quarter staff and 10 soul coins which we will talk about later um oh yeah and um, among the other corpses, there is also a broom of flying. Oh, that's fun. Oh, a broom of flying. Very nice. You said a cloak of what? Proper Octobery. C cloak of Arachnidia. Very nice. <laughs>